The mysterious room was dark. There were beautiful furniture and floor lamps there. The clock showed 7 o'clock. A system window appears, welcome to the world of Mom's Note. The main character named Suzio was lying on the floor of the room. He was wearing a leather jacket, jeans and boots. Suzio raised his head and opened one eye, looking at something. A system window appears. The selected person who finds himself in this world can use any of his skills. Suzio squatted down and rubbed his head. He looked confused. The main character stood up and looked around the room he found himself in. A system window appears. Skills are selected randomly. Suzio rubbed his neck and asked if this was the strange world. A system window appears. Congratulations Suzio. You have been randomly selected for an SSS rank skill, a born rebel. Suzio opened his eyes wide and opened his mouth slightly. He had black hair that was gray at the ends. His eyes were yellow. He couldn't believe that he had acquired an SSS rank skill. Several system windows appeared. Analysis, 100 Jin, you have 99 Jin of Rebellion. You are born to be a rebel, which means you can break any given rules. You will not be judged or looked at with disapproval. Suzio smiled and clenched his hand into a fist. He shouted that this was the best gift for him. He confidently placed his hands on his hips and grinned. He thought that everyone should be careful with him, because he was born to rebel. Suzio smiled and put his hand on his chin, saying that no one from Long Country had ever held the SSS rank. The chance is said to be 1 in 100 million. Suzio said that a few days ago, an a ranked person was selected from the East Island. They were ahead of the Long Country. But now everything has changed. Several people in the office were watching the main character. Suzio's image appeared on the projector. People were sitting at a large table in the dark. A man with wrinkles on his forehead sat in his chair. He said that Suzio is only 18 years old and he is too young, and if he fails the test, Long Country will be invaded. Several system windows have appeared. This means that if the candidate selected from the country does not pass the test, his country will be forced to experience all the hardships. This kind of invasion will lead to numerous losses, and sparsely populated countries will be under threat of extermination. Panicking people on the city streets were startled by purple rays coming from the sky. In the office, the man with glasses spread his hands and said that they don't know what Suzio's skill is. He suggested conveying a message to the main character. The man in the green suit hit the table with his fist and said angrily that they could only give three clues and they shouldn't waste them so easily. He added that this is a global live broadcast, they have already attracted Suzio, and all they can do is watch. A thin man in a grey Chinese suit said gloomily that the long country had suffered five defeats in a row and it was no longer possible to live in such conditions. All these people were leaders of the country. They received an email from East Island. The letter says, This time our choice fell on rank A. Country long, you won't miss it, right? Just don't be jealous. The man in the green suit angrily hit the table with his fist and cursed. The man with glasses stood up and, straightening his suit, said that the East Island, as soon as they got a person of this rank, immediately began to boast about it. He asked angrily if they thought there were no such people in long country. The man in the Chinese suit said that they don't value their lives at all, so they also dare to compete with them. The man in the green suit was very angry. He bared his teeth and clenched his fists, saying that if it weren't for the fact that Long Country was now in a difficult situation, he would have already destroyed the eastern island along with its population. A man in a brown suit, sitting at a table, folded his hands in front of him and said that the current situation was not entirely in favor of the Long Country. The water in the glass on the table cast a blue shadow. People from the government were counting on Suzio because the future of the country depended on him. In the room where Suzio was, there was a vase with fruit patterns on the table. There was a note near the vase. Suzio looked questioningly at the contents of the table. He walked over and picked up the note. It was a note from my mother where she said that she had left and would return in a week. Mom asked him to read the rules carefully and follow them. The main character began to read the rules left by his mother. The note said, First rule, whether it's day or night, don't open the window. Second rule, there are frozen steaks in the freezer, do not cut them until they are fully cooked. Third rule, there is a toilet, but never turn on the light when using it. Fourth rule, wall clocks always show the exact time, but the clock cannot be used as an alarm clock. Fifth rule, don't go out, if someone knocks on the door, don't open it under any circumstances. Rule 6, take care of the cat, but don't give it a name. Seventh rule, you need to feed the cat noodles. Eighth rule, keep the cat with you in the evening, don't leave it alone in the living room. Ninth rule, sometimes a neighbor may come, give him cat food. Tenth rule, you can't turn on the TV, if you're bored, play with the cat. Suzio looked towards the window and said that he should not open it. 
he began to head straight towards the window. With a sharp movement, the main character opened the curtains. The sun was shining outside the window and the weather was great. Light began to leak into the room. The game was broadcast on a huge screen in the city. The young guy asked if the first rule said it was forbidden to open windows. The girl in the dress said that Suzio's appearance suggests that he is a rebel. The guy and the girl watched the broadcast on the phone with interest. The guy asked if it was the main character's first time in that world. The girl said that his movements were skillful and confident. The man was running on a treadmill and also watching the broadcast. He exclaimed that Suzio broke the first rule in just three minutes. Father and daughter watched the broadcast in surprise. The natives looked at the game and were perplexed, cursing in an unknown language. Suzio was enjoying the warmth and sunshine at this time. Soon the USA, three Arab countries, the Aboriginal country and many others sent a hint to their candidates that the first rule was wrong. Messages to other players came from space and looked like rays. A system window appeared. The first rule turned out to be incorrect. The long country remains. A man with black hair reaching to the back of his head heard this announcement. He had a mustache under his nose. He turned sharply towards the window and asked how long country realized which rule was wrong so quickly. The player hurriedly ran towards the window and shouted that he could not lose. He grabbed the curtains and pulled them. The player spread his arms and began to smile, asking what about the others. Suddenly his face changed and became suspicious. Purple smoke appeared in the room. An attack beam was directed at the player, and he began to activate a protective field. The man looked at his palms, sweating. He was squatting while under a protective field. However, the attack beam still reached him, and a bald patch appeared on his head. The commentator shouted that this player had a sky shield and was very lucky. The man himself continued to sit under the shield and looked out the window. Candidates from several other small countries were not as successful. They received minor injuries that can still be healed. The aborigine was wounded in his arm and head. Commentators said that the long country should not be so proud of its achievements. Things could still turn out not in their favor. Suzio was lying on the sofa in his room, lazing around. The commentator said that everyone became more careful. An hour passed and no further progress occurred. The main character looked up irritably. His stomach began to growl. Suzio stood up and walked to the golden refrigerator. He said he was hungry and decided to see what was in the refrigerator. The refrigerator was almost empty. Suzio saw that there were steaks and a package of noodles there. He counted the number of steaks, there were five of them, and said that five pieces would last for five days, but he needed to last a week. He grabbed a package of noodles because he thought that he couldn't go hungry and he'd better eat the noodles. With a satisfied face, the main character looked at his future lunch. The commentator asked what the cat would get if he ate noodles, because in the seventh rule they asked to feed her noodles. Another observer said that this is the end and he wants to break the rules again, asking if he will be lucky this time. Suzio poured soy sauce into the broth. He stood in the kitchen and prepared food for himself. Suddenly someone jumped up to him on the kitchen unit, which he did not expect. A cat came to him. She sat near the boiling broth. The cat had orange fur. Suzio looked at her and extended his hand to her, saying that she was very cute. He stroked her head and said that from now on she would be called ugly. The cat immediately began to get angry and hiss at Suzio. It was announced that a participant from the country of Long violated the sixth rule, which states that you cannot give names to a cat. The government of the Long Country said that the guy apparently has no fears, and the cat is clearly not happy about such a name. Suzio smiled and continued to stroke the cat's head. He didn't care if the cat turned into someone. He narrowed his eyes at her. He thought that mom's note is a mortality rate, and 99% of strange conversations about the world cannot be conveyed just like that. But he is a rebel, so he will always be protected. Suzio imagined himself protected under the dome, and on his head he had a sign saying that he was a rebel. He picked up the pan of noodles and thought that no matter how terrible the outcome, he didn't have to worry about anything. The main character sat down at the table and began to eat noodles straight from the saucepan. There was a cat sitting on the table, looking at him. Steam was coming out of the saucepan, and Suzio deliciously sucked on the noodles. He was happy that he had a skill that allowed him to not be afraid of anything. The government of the long country said that this is the end, because Suzio is eating noodles, and all hopes for him are fading. The cat watched the main character burp after a delicious dinner. Suzio grabbed the bag of cat food under the cat's disapproving gaze. The cat looked angry as she looked at the bowl filled with food. A system window appeared above her head. Feed the cat noodles, do not give her food. Country Long said that the look of this cat does not bode well. 
East Island gloated that Suzio had broken the sixth and seventh rules in a few minutes, and he would soon lose. The main character stretched, smiled and went with the stewpan to the kitchen. He said that since he had eaten, it was time to start cleaning. The cat looked after him angrily. She wagged her tail. Her shadow looked ominous. The US argued that Long's country was unlucky with its candidate. Korea said that the cat has become so creepy, and Suzio is definitely the end. India grinned and said that when the rules about strange conversations come to the long country again, it will cease to exist. People from the long country government said that they thought Suzio was a genius, but now they realized that they were wrong. They were preparing for strange conversations and had already lost all hope. People from the government of the long country all gathered together at the table in the office. The gray-haired man slammed his hand on the table and asked displeasedly what this Suzio was doing. He said that the cat plays a big role here and this should be clear to everyone. The man with the mustache leaned his head on his hand, closing his eyes. He said irritably that if they lost the cat, they would have a hard time. The man in the brown suit pointed his finger at the table and said that Suzio was supposed to be the savior of long country. But in his opinion, he was still too young for that. They can't take complete control of everything, but they can give Suzio at least one hint. The man in the white shirt lowered his head and shouted that Suzio should pay attention to the cat. While all the conference participants were sitting at the table and discussing, a system window appeared, Vietnam, Laos, Myanmar. Six countries are immersed in a world of strange conversations. Countdown, 10, 9, 8, 7. The gray-haired man looked intensely at the system window. A bead of sweat ran down his face as he asked why these countries were so quickly attacked by strange conversations. A man in a brown suit with a smile on his face shouted that he knew what was happening. He said that just now other countries followed Suzio's example and broke the first rule. Candidates from major countries used their skills to avoid being taken over, and others failed to fight back. The man in the blue sweater raised one eyebrow in disbelief and asked if this meant that some of Suzio's rivals had been eliminated. A man with curly gray hair and a beard said that candidates from major countries also miss precious opportunities for error, and this speeds up the process of strange talk spreading. The man in the brown suit folded his hands in front of him and thoughtfully asked why Suzio was not punished if this rule was found to be wrong. He assumed that his talent was some kind of powerful immunity, or something similar. One of the meeting participants smiled and suggested that in this case, there is no need to send the precious hint to Suzio. The man in the gray suit frowned. He was silent for some time. His face was illuminated by the dim light from the projector. The man hoped that the main character would show his abilities and return the long country to its former glory. Sitting in his large leather chair, he replied that they would not waste the tip. A world of strange conversations. The hands on the clock hanging on the wall showed seven o'clock. John from the USA was a muscular man. He had blonde hair and was wearing a gray t-shirt. John looked doubtfully at the raw steak and thought that according to the second rule, these steaks should be eaten raw. But suddenly this rule was wrong. A man with a receding hairline, whose hair had been burned off by the beam, looked anxiously at the piece of meat and thought that he had already lost his shield. One more mistake would kill him. Pak Puchin from Korea was a guy with brown hair and gray eyes. He lay on the floor, half-conscious, next to the steak and drooled. He moaned that he was hungry and didn't know what to do. Long Country said that some countries have been knocked out, so everyone is afraid of steak, and asked what Suzio will do. People hoped that he would make the right decision. A well-done steak with sprigs of rosemary fell onto the plate. Suzio began to cut the finished meat in half with a knife. He took one piece with his fork and brought it to his mouth. Country Long said in disappointment that he just fried it and ate it. The main character had cheeks stuffed with juicy meat. He smiled with happiness and even blushed, saying that it was very tasty. The US laughed at him for breaking the rule again. After eating, Suzio sat relaxed on the sofa. Country Long said that he ate his steak and nothing happened, so it turns out that the second rule is also wrong. East Island called Suzio a fool and asked if he would get away with it again. The United States hoped that its leadership would tell participants that steak could be fried rather than staring at it with hungry eyes. The main character got up from the sofa and stretched. The cat looked at his back. She arched her back and aggressively watched the main character. Purple smoke emanated from her shadow, and a smiling face appeared on it. Wong Country realized that the cat was up to something wrong and Suzio needed to be warned. 
they advised him to stay away from her. But it is unknown whether the message got through. For some time, countries have been sending their participants hints. Signals from space were sent to candidates from different countries. But there were also those participants who avoided breaking the rules. They no longer dared to fry steaks like Suzio and ate them raw. A girl with long brown hair had difficulty tearing off a piece of raw meat. She looked very muscular. Within a minute, the girl was surrounded by a whirlwind with a purple aura. She squealed in fear. Commentators from the long country realized that the second rule was wrong, and the rest of the participants did not listen to Suzio. As a result, they found themselves in no better position. The whirlwind began to tear the girl apart. A broken plate with raw meat lay on the floor. A system window appeared, Lemu, Champa. Five countries are immersed in a world of strange conversations. Countdown, 10, 9, 8, 7. John looked at the system window and was surprised. He didn't understand how Suzio realized again which rule was false. John knelt down on one knee, his pupils constricted. He didn't understand who Suzio was. He shouted that he had an S-rank skill but he could not resist the main character. John frowned, a bead of sweat running down his face. He said that his competition with Su Zio had just begun, and he hoped that he would last a few more days. The cat's large yellow eyes reflected Su Zio, who was sitting imposingly on the sofa. The main character looked at the cat, from which an ominous purple aura emanated. A system window appeared, beware of the cat, it's dangerous. Six more small countries followed your example, but were liquidated. Suzio leaned forward, placing his hand on his chin. He didn't think that six countries would be expelled in just half a day. He began to think that they followed his example. That is, they also opened the window. A sly grin appeared on his face. He thought that since they liked it so much, he would show even more. Suzio, with a gloomy face, grabbed the cat by the scruff of the neck and ordered her to take a walk. The commentator asked what Suzio was doing and didn't the executives tell him to stay away from the cat. Another commentator said that in this way Suzio would definitely destroy his country soon. The main character grabbed the door handle. He opened the door and threw the cats out of the room without any feeling of pity. The cat lay on the floor as if it had given up the ghost. She was stunned by the fall. Suzio smiled and rubbed his palms, saying that it is much calmer without a cat. All commentators were dumbfounded by his behavior and did not understand why the cat did not kill him. They assumed that his luck had not yet run its course. The main character took the TV remote control in his hand. He sat down on the sofa and turned on the TV, whistling a tune. He asked if a cat could replace a TV. The commentator said that his heart would stop because Su Zio broke the rule. A system window appeared, the tenth rule, you cannot turn on the TV. If you're bored, play with the cats. Suzio watched a cartoon about pigs on TV. Commentators were shocked by his behavior, some expected his death, and others promised that they would honor him. On the screen in the conference room of the East Island, Suzio and a man with a receding hairline appeared, desperate and covering his head with his hands. The men in the conference room discussed what was happening. The man with the mustache didn't understand how Suzio guessed where the rules were right and where they were wrong. Another man slammed his hands on the table and asked what was happening to John, since the long country was ahead of the United States. The bald man with glasses was sweating slightly. He got angry and shouted that the US was not making any progress at all, and he asked what they should do and whether to give a hint. The man with the mustache frowned and said that the TV was not such a necessity and one could live without it. However, at the moment one of the candidates was tired and also turned on the TV. It was a member from Dunbala, a muscular man in a t-shirt and shorts. He was sitting on the sofa with the remote control in front of the TV. Suddenly, a purple aura began to appear from the TV screen. The man did not understand what it was. The aura spread throughout the room and seemed to suck in the candidate. He started screaming in horror. A system window appeared. A participant from Dunbala was immersed in a world of strange conversations. The countdown began. 10, 9, 8, 7. Panic began in the conference room. The man in the sweater shouted that the TV cannot be turned on, which means the tenth rule is correct. The man in the pink shirt asked why Suzio was not punished then. Someone added that the window also could not be opened, but nothing happened to the main character. The man in the jacket slammed his hands on the table and stood up, saying that this could no longer be explained by luck. The man in the sweater made a blank expression and assumed that Suzio, like the East Island candidate, had an A-rank skill. The man in the jacket agreed with him and said that among the A-rank skills there is a talent that can help you avoid the task three times. He smiled, although he was sweating slightly. The man was thinking that Su Zio had spent his three opportunities, and what would he do next? A viewer of the broadcast said that the day had already passed, and East Island and Pauzai were already at their limit. 
They did not follow Suzio's example and did not break the rules. Against the background of a dark red sky stood a brick two-story house, near which bushes and trees grew. The commentator said that he likes to see how jealous they are of Suzio. A viewer of the broadcast asked what the main character does. Another commentator replied that he was going to the toilet. After all, he hadn't gone there for a whole day. Clutching his stomach, Suzio walked tensely towards the door. He was sweating. When the main character approached the doorway, a cat ran between his legs. He looked at her in bewilderment. Suzio found himself in the toilet, where it was very dark. The tiles on the wall were slightly cracked. The viewer of the broadcast got scared and asked the main character to turn on the light. Another viewer told him that the third rule was that the lights should not be turned on. The commentator asked what to do then and would anyone dare to go to such a toilet. Suzio yawned, covering his mouth, and then turned on the light. He noticed drops of blood and a scratched word on the wall. The main character realized that the cat did it. A death wish was scratched on the wall. Suzio started chasing the frightened cat, screaming. He grabbed her and started hitting her in the face, asking if she had written on the wall. He shouted that she shouldn't behave like that, and next time she shouldn't blame him if he makes a pot out of her for such offenses. The cat bared its teeth and meowed angrily, its eyes turning red. The main character took her by the scruff of the neck and looked at her displeasedly, saying that he was still not convinced. The cat looked pitiful and scared. Suzio threw her into the toilet with all his might and shouted that she would be punished for such antics, after which he ordered her to remove the writing on the wall. Otherwise he would cook her for lunch tomorrow. Viewers of the broadcast were shocked. The cat was lying unconscious on the toilet lid. Commentators actively discussed what happened. Viewers of the broadcast noticed Jai Chuengen, a man who had a receding hairline. Jai Chuengen was already all red and covered in sweat. He hurriedly went to the toilet, taking off his pants. The man had already begun to take off his underwear, sitting down on the toilet. Jai Chuengen began to do his business in the toilet with relief, after which a foul smell appeared. Viewers noticed with disgust that the smell was even displayed on the broadcast. A commenter asked if there was anything on the wall. A purple aura began to approach Jai Chuengen's leg. He raised his head with horror and fear and noticed that he was already surrounded by these mysterious forces. At the last moment, Jai Chuengen managed to use his skill, and a protective field appeared around him, preventing attacks. He sat down on the toilet again and sighed with relief. Viewers asked if he was immune. Jai Chuengen stood up when he saw that the attacks had begun again. He turned pale and frightened. The shield began to crack under the pressure of the attacks. A second later, Jai Chuengen's defense finally fell. He jumped up and ran without even putting on his pants. He barely reached the light switch, after which the light in the toilet came on. Jai Chuengen stood in the middle of the toilet with his pants down. Commentators were disgusted and said that it would have been better if he had not turned on the light. The people in Flower Island's conference room smiled as they watched the broadcast. The man with glasses exclaimed that Jai Chuengen got rid of the attack of strange words, which is already good. The man in the gray suit asked if he had an rank talent comparable to Suzio. Jai Chuengen stood with a tense face, leaning against the wall. He thought that he had only one opportunity left to break the rules. It got dark outside the window, and dark red clouds covered the entire sky. The main character picked up the wall clock. Together with the clock, he walked past the cabinet with vases and headed into the bedroom. Commentators were discussing that Suzio was going to break the rules again. The main character pressed his watch to his chest and turned around. A cat was sitting on the floor. A viewer of the broadcast reminded him to take his cat with him before going to bed, and he asked if she was waiting for Suzio. The main character walked into the bedroom and slammed the door right in front of the cat. Why she was shocked. At this time, the other candidate was already sleeping in bed with the cat in his arms. A viewer of the broadcast said that this rule remained true, the cat's reaction did not change, but Suzio's cat remained outside. The commentator was wondering what would happen next. Suzio lay imposingly on the bed and slept, snoring and drooling. The cat was lying on the sofa in the living room. An ominous red aura emanated from her. A tear appeared on her back, from which someone's bloody hand began to emerge. A scary, thin woman with long white hair crawled out of the cat. Her entire body and clothes were covered in blood. The commentators were horrified and very scared. The monstrous woman moved unnaturally around the living room, limping. She stopped near the door to the bedroom where Suzio was currently sleeping. The woman began to scrape her claws along the wooden door. She continued to stand in front of the door for three hours, according to commentators. There was a black eerie aura around her. Viewers of the broadcast were about to go to bed when suddenly they noticed that the woman had moved from her place. A grin appeared on her face, which was covered with a shock of white hair. 
The woman raised her head and screamed shrilly. The commentators were scared and said that they didn't want to sleep after that. Half an hour passed. Commentators were wondering what happened during this half hour and whether Suzio was alive. Everything was fine with the cat. She was sleeping peacefully on the sofa. She was lying on the pillow and her mouth was slightly open. Meanwhile, the long government was watching Suzio in the conference room. A man with a flat top haircut folded his hands in front of him and said that all they had to do was pray. The man in the gray shirt suggested we watch a little longer. One of the conference participants, a bespectacled man with a long beard, said that if the cat itself is the problem, then actions with it will have consequences for candidates from other countries. At this time, a meeting was also taking place in the East Island Conference Room. Everyone from the East Island government had evil grins on their faces. They gloated and hoped that Long Country and Suzio would hold out as little as possible. They believed that when the world of strange conversations overtook Long Country again, they would have a hard time. In the US conference room, a man with a thick mustache said that Suzio broke the rules three times in a row by calling the cat by name, eating its food, and even leaving it alone in the living room. He thought that this would be the end of the protagonist's luck. His colleague said that if Suzio failed the final test, Long Country would fall into chaos. The Pakistani government was also watching Suzio. They sat in the conference room and wished Long and Suzio country good luck. A man in the green uniform said that if they were defeated again, they would not be given another chance. A man with a thick black beard and a white suit ordered his subordinate to send a classified message to the Long country. He wanted to convey to them that Pakistan will support them. His subordinate accepted the order. The second day of the test began. Suzio had just woken up and was rubbing his eyes while yawning. A system window with a letter appeared in front of his face. Suzio realized that this was the second time that management had reminded about the danger from the cat. He wondered what they saw yesterday. It was a message from the leadership of the Long Country, where they warned the main character that a woman crawled out of the cat's body at midnight, and advised him to be careful. The main character sat on the bed, reading the letter, and began to think about the fact that a woman was hiding in the body of a cat, who came out in the middle of the night. He didn't know who she was or if she was dangerous. He then said that even if the cat was dangerous, as long as he broke the rules, nothing would happen to him. The main character closed his eyes and put his hand to his chin. He said that otherwise he would not have lived to this day. He tried the handle of the bedroom door. He walked out into the living room and then put his hand on the wall. Suzio looked at the cat that was lying on the sofa and thought that it didn't look anything unusual. He walked past the sofa with the cat and the chair and headed to the toilet. Opening the door, he saw that it was very clean, and the inscription with wishes for death had disappeared. Suzio turned around to look at the sleeping cat. He didn't understand how she dealt with those scratches and assumed that there really was a monster living in her body. The main character left the toilet and headed to the kitchen, saying that he did the right thing by not taking the cat into the bedroom with him because it only causes problems. Commentators said his words made sense. Suzio stirred the broth with chopsticks, which was simmering in the wok over the fire. The broth was boiling and steam was emanating from it. Commentators noted that he was again eating food that was intended for the cat, but thought that if nothing happened the first time, then everything would be fine this time. The main character closed his eyes and smiled, preparing himself a breakfast of noodles. Viewers of the broadcast were told to look at the other participants. Jai Chuengen was still lying in bed and sleeping. The cat was lying on him and was also sleeping peacefully. Commentators from the East Island wondered what Jai Chuengen was doing when Su Zio was already preparing breakfast. The US commentator said that even a Pakistani candidate named Pasha has woken up. He asked why everyone else was lying down. Pasha from Pakistan and Suzio took down their wall clock and used it as an alarm clock, and the clock in turn kept moving. The hands of this clock moved as they should, but the clock that was left hanging in the living room stopped ticking. That is, for those who are currently in bed, time stopped yesterday evening. In the world of strange words, if a person cannot understand the passage of time, he may remain here forever. Jai chewing and lay unconscious on his back, with many stopped clocks around him. A viewer of the broadcast asked what they should do because only seven days are allotted for the trial. After the end of this time the punishment will be several times more serious than a simple suspension. He was told that something like this had already happened. A major country's candidate was overworked, resulting in hundreds of strange conversations coming his way. The candidate screamed and asked for help. The house he was in was attacked, and the entire surroundings turned into ruins. Overnight, this great country fell, and their land and people disappeared, as if they had never existed. 
The buildings were destroyed, the roads were in terrible condition, and there were traces of blood everywhere. The corpses of the inhabitants of this country lay right on the rubble of buildings. The leadership of one of the countries whose candidate did not wake up on time began a meeting. The man became angry and slammed his fist on the table, shouting that the fourth rule was both right and wrong. They were panicking about what to do, and one of the management members said that when the outside world sent a request, the candidate would hear a sound in his ears. They decided to hurry up and send a signal. The United States was the first to make this decision. They sent a message to John, after which he opened his eyes and woke up. Following the example of the United States, the East Island, Korea and other countries did the same. All over the earth, candidates began to receive notifications. However, as the candidates awakened one after another, all three precious clues for them were wasted. Jai Chuangan jumped out of bed in a panic as soon as he received the message. Behind him, the rest of the participants began to wake up. In the Long Country Conference Room, a meeting was taking place around a large table with a picture of a world map on it. The man in the gray suit said that except for Pakistan and Long Country, other countries had run out of clues. He was told that now these countries can only observe. Everything depends only on the abilities of their candidates. The bearded man adjusted his glasses and said that all these countries mocked them when their country was in crisis, but now it was their turn to laugh. A system window appeared, advice, stay away from the cat. You need to follow Suzio's actions. John sat on the bed, reading the message. He was very unhappy and was shaking with anger. He frowned, a vein popping out on his cheek. John shouted that it was Suzio from Long Country again. He asked menacingly if this was the reward for his S rank. John clenched his teeth and clenched his hand into a fist. He said that the main character is only a rank, he has too much pride. Suzio sat relaxed on the sofa with a bored face holding the TV remote control in his hands. He went about his business after breakfast. While other candidates have begun to understand the rules, he is in no hurry. Jai Chuangan sat at the table and reread the rules. He held a pen in his hands, marking something. He realized that now rules numbered 1, 6, 7, 8 and 10 are correct, and 2 and 3 are incorrect. The fourth rule is a mixture of correct and incorrect options. Rules 5 and 9 cannot now be defined as right or wrong. He assumed that they were also mixed. He looked at the rules and began to think. He said that in the fifth rule there is a very strange clause, and judging by it, you cannot open the door to strangers, but you can open the door to a neighbor. He didn't know how he could be sure that it was his neighbor who had come. Jai Chuang and started making notes in the rules so as not to get confused. Suddenly a knock was heard. Jai Chuang and raised his head, but did not pay any attention to the knocking. He didn't understand how anyone could figure this out, so he needed to quickly analyze it. He knew that usually if two rules contradict each other, there is a high probability that only one of them is correct. But this is a world of strange conversations and nothing here lends itself to logic. Jai Chuangan began to tremble with excitement and sweat appeared on his face. He concluded that rules number 5 and 9 are either right or wrong. He shouted that he couldn't pull himself together and ordered them to stop knocking. Commentators felt sorry for Jai Chuangan. Someone also knocked on Su Zio's door. The main character took a break from watching TV and turned his head towards the door, asking who was knocking. The one who knocked claimed to be his neighbor. Behind the door, surrounded by a dark aura, the silhouette of a man was visible. Suzio put on a serious expression and assumed that his neighbor was a very polite guy. The main character headed to the front door to open it. The commentators were very worried and did not know what would happen next. Suzio opened the front door, but there was no one behind it. The sun was shining outside, illuminating the fields and trees. The main character looked around, but didn't notice anyone. He scratched his cheek, perplexed. At this time, a shapeless black entity was crawling towards his feet. The entity began to rise, taking shape. A viewer of the broadcast said it looked terrifying. A black silhouette with bright red eyes pounced on Suzio. The broadcast of Suzio's game stopped and there was interference. One of the leaders of the long country slammed his hand on the table. He looked very dejected, saying that it was all over and Su Zio was caught. He thought that strange conversations about rules would soon begin and Long Country would disappear. His colleague lay down on the table and shouted that God had not blessed them and the country of Long had come to an end. Chaos began on the main street. As soon as the townspeople saw that the broadcast had ended, they began to panic. The residents shouted that they were all going to die and they did not want to plunge into the world of strange conversations. Someone was so scared that he said that it would be better if he killed himself, because at least that way he would die happy. The conference of three countries has begun. They sat at the festive table with glasses of alcohol. 
The mustachioed man grinned and said that the country of Long had no more hope and would soon cease to exist. A man in a jacket with a fashionable hairstyle smiled and said that the Long country could be considered exterminated. A man with a thick mustache took a sip of his drink and talked about how he would personally oversee the demise of the Long country. Two minutes passed. The image on Suzio's broadcast began to recover. His image with noise appeared on the screen on the main street. The people shouted that the picture was appearing again. Suzio smiled and waved his hand, apologizing to the people. He said he was attacked, so the screen stopped broadcasting. But now everything is fine. Commentators were perplexed and did not understand what happened and how Suzio dealt with it. Many admired the main character. One of the US leaders was very angry. He said that Suzio has once again challenged everyone, and he seems to have very impressive skills. The East Island leader frowned and bared his teeth. He didn't understand why strange conversations hadn't started yet. He laid down doomedly on the table and shouted that there was a demon there. His colleague ordered him to stop. He pointed to the screen and suggested looking at the other candidates. Pak Puchin from Korea sat at his desk on the sofa and was shaking with fear. He begged him to stop knocking. Viewers of the broadcast said that except for Su Zio, no one dared to open the door. Pak Puchin turned pale and grabbed his head. He was very scared and continued to beg him to stop knocking. He began to tear the hair on his head. His eyes became very red. He asked who was there and what he wanted. The knocks on the doors were no longer heard. Pak Puchin looked at the door anxiously, asking if it had really stopped. A second later, a sharp sword pierced the door. The guy moved in fright and was taken aback. The forces of strange words began to be directed towards him. Commentators laughed at his cowardice. Pak Puchin curled up in a ball, afraid of what might happen. Out of fear he had a bowel movement. The spectators were disgusted. The Korean government watched the broadcast. They said that this is the end and Pak Puchin will not cope. At this time, Suzio was lying on the sofa with a smile on his face after eating a delicious steak. The knock was heard again, and the main character turned to the door irritably, asking who it was. He got up from the sofa and walked closer to the door. The knocker said that it was a neighbor and he would like to borrow one thing. Commentators urged him not to open the door. The main character looked annoyed. He thought that the more normal, the stranger. He didn't understand whether his neighbor could communicate normally, because this is a different world. Suzio still decided to open the door. He opened the door, but there was no one outside. The main character came home and slammed the door, saying that he opened the door, but no one attacked. Commentators admired him. They suggested looking at the candidate from Korea, because he heard the second knock. Pak Puchin looked distraught, as if he had lost his mind. The guy muttered something incomprehensible and headed towards the door. He opened the door, but only a dark aura was waiting for him outside. The purple power of strange words fell upon Pak Puchin. A system window appeared, the Korean participant Pak Puchin failed. The immersion into the world of strange conversations begins, the countdown, 10, 9, 8. The Korean government realized that it was all over. There was noise on the Pak Puchin broadcast screen. A man in an expensive suit walked up to the screen and angrily asked how Pak Puchin could have made such a mistake. The guy in the tracksuit grabbed his head in a panic and said that strange conversations were coming, and Pak Puchin had destroyed all their hopes. Korea began to be attacked. The city turned into ruins, residents asked for help. Lifeless bodies lay on the rubble. Someone tried to run away, shouting that he wanted to move to Long Country. In the Long Country conference room, the leaders rejoiced. The man in the brown suit said that Korea had finally received its retribution. The man in the military cap said that he would like Jai Chuangan from the East Island to also receive retribution. They told him that he just had to wait, because he wouldn't be able to hold out for long. There was a globe on their table. The globe showed a projection of the world map. After the liquidation of Korea, only two small countries remained, besides the Long State. These were Pakistan and the East Island. In the US conference room, management discussed options while reading a variety of manuals. Large countries have a much wider range of information about strange conversations, so they are more relaxed about the failures of others. There were many books and folders with information on the table in their conference room. An image of a strange creature appeared, which had many arms and a huge red eyeball. The world of strange conversations is too complex and diverse, no one fully understands it. There is no guarantee that the selected candidate will be up to the task. Thus, after the elimination incident, the participants became more cautious. The clock hands showed 7 o'clock. Someone knocked on the door of Suzio's house again. The main character walked up to the front door and asked who was there. Commentators wondered why they were knocking on Suzio's door for the third time. The knocker said that he was a neighbor and he would like to exchange cat food for food. 
Suzayo frowned and put his fist to his chin. He realized that this time the voice was very cold and disgusting. For sure it was definitely a neighbor. The main character turned to the door and shouted that the cat had eaten all the food, after which he drove him away, saying that he did not need food. The neighbor apologized for the disturbance. Commentators were speculating that he had broken the rule again. A system window appeared. Rule 10, sometimes a neighbor may come, give him cat food. The commentators decided to go into other rooms of the live broadcast to see who made what choice. John from the USA opened the door. There was a man standing behind it with a bag of food. John himself had cat food in his hands. Commentators were surprised that he was okay, concluding that the ninth rule could be right and wrong at the same time. Commentators suggested looking at Chai Chuangan. The man curled up on the sofa and shook with fear, saying in a trembling voice that he could not hear anything. Commentators mocked his cowardice. An unknown liquid began to crawl under his door. The liquid turned into a strange creature of enormous size that was about to attack Chai Chuangan from behind. The man activated his shield, which saved him from the attack. He looked back in horror and saw that the entity had slipped under the door. Jai Chuangan was glad that he still had his shield, otherwise he would have already been killed. The commentators were discussing his skills, after which they became interested in what skill Su Zio had. At the moment there are six candidates left. Su Zio from Long Country grinned and looked confident. The UK candidate had purple hair and wore a purple dress. Pasha from Pakistan smiled awkwardly. John from the USA looked serious, crossing his arms over his chest. The candidate from Zuku was a dark-skinned man wearing blue clothes. Jai Chuangan from the East Island looked scared and suspicious. The candidate from Bali looked exhausted and tired, wearing a brown robe. The two-story house was illuminated with a red glow. After the candidates woke up, they discovered that several rules had been added to the note mom left. John looked at the washing cat and pointed his finger at the table. Eleventh rule, the cat will protect you, but it can also harm you. Rule 12, if a cat suddenly goes berserk, please kill it immediately. Rule 13, sometimes a strange woman may appear in the house, try to communicate with her, you can trust her. Fourteenth rule, time is lost, do not rely only on the clock. Fifteenth rule, time is lost, do not rely only on the clock. Rule 15, you can go outside, but watch your shoes. Rule 16, do not lock the bedroom door, under no circumstances do this. Rule 17, there is nothing on the balcony, but don't be surprised if you hear something. Rule 18, if mom doesn't come back after 7 days of absence, open the door and everything will be over. The new rules are very confusing for the candidates, especially rules number 11 and 12. John looked anxiously at the cat, which was lying on the table and licking its fur. The cat has always played a positive role in the eyes of candidates. Except for Su Zio, everyone slept with her for two days. John sat down on the sofa and grabbed his head. He asked if the cat should be killed if it changed. Su Zio walked out of the bedroom and stretched, yawning. He looked at the disgruntled cat that was sitting on the sofa. Commentators said they trust the cat less and less. Su Zio bent down towards the cat causing the cat to become scared and tense. He made a creepy expression on his face and began to stretch his hands towards her, saying that today he was drawn to try the cat's meat and he was wondering if her meat was tasty. Hearing this, the cat ran away with lightning speed. Suzio grinned. There were flowers in a pot on the windowsill. Suzio went to the window and asked if anything happened to the cat at night. He said it was better not to touch the cat. He broke into a smile and blushed, stroking his stomach. He imagined roasting cat meat on a spit. A doll in a red dress was sitting on the balcony. The main character noticed her when he looked out the window. He went out onto the balcony and approached the doll. He took the doll in his hands and asked if the cat might have left the doll. The doll immediately became covered in blood, and its eye began to glow. A protective field appeared around Su Zio's hand. Commentators noticed this and said that Jai Chuangan had something similar. The doll began to become distorted and her hair began to fall out. The main character was disgusted and he said that she ruined his whole morning. The doll's face turned blood red and its smile became creepy. Commentators thought the best thing to do would be to throw the doll away. Suzio went inside with the doll. He didn't throw it away. He threw the doll into the toilet with a displeased face. The main character closed the door and just began to wait. There was also a cat in the toilet. Knocking and noise were heard from there. Commentators admired Suzio. They realized that the cat and the doll were fighting in the toilet. In the conference room, the US government discussed that at the moment, Su Zio and Jai Chuangan's immunity is the most. But Su Zio has exceeded all possible margin for error. The man in the suit said that the main character's skills are better than Jai Chuangan. He is at least S rank. He sweated and frowned. 
the man hoped that John could surpass Suzyel. At this time, the US candidate was rereading the rules. He thought the cat was okay for now. He debated whether he should use his skill. A system window appeared, S rank talent, mistaken identity. There are three attempts to recognize incorrect rules. In addition, the talent allows you to communicate with any selected person for three minutes. John looked intensely at the sleeping cat and thought that he only had three attempts, two of which he spent in the first two days. He doubted whether he really wanted to know everything about the cat. He turned away from her, frowning. He believed that the role of the cat was not so important here, but in any case it was necessary to beware of it. Rule 15 says you can go outside, but John didn't see the point in that. He realized that Rule 18 was the most difficult. He decided to use his skill on this rule. He raised his hands above the rule book, and then a yellow glow appeared. John looked at the rule book. His skill determined that Rule 18 was wrong. He smiled, looking at the sheet, and said that Suzio would definitely not think of such a thing. There was a noise outside the window. John headed to the window, asking where the children were from. The cat touched the man's ankle with its paw. She started rubbing herself against his leg, which he noticed. John sat down and asked if the cat wanted to tell him not to leave. The man stroked her head. He looked out the window and saw a doll on the balcony. John said that the cat protects him and she is not at all like other cats, but he still would not risk going out onto the balcony, because this is stated in Rule 17. An eerie aura hovered around the doll. John smiled, petting the cat. He wanted to check the balcony to find out how loyal the cat was to him. While John was checking the cat, children's crying was heard in the houses of other candidates. Zuku's Arthur sat on the sofa, plugged his ears and closed his eyes, pretending not to hear anything. As for going outside, most candidates ignored this point. A candidate from Bali couldn't sleep and had been constantly nervous since he got here, so he opened the window and stood silently in a daze. His face looked tired and exhausted. A second later, forces appeared from the window and attacked him. A system window has appeared. A participant from Bali is immersed in a world of strange conversations. The countdown has begun. A meeting was taking place in the Bali conference room. The man said it was time to notify the whole country. He ordered to turn on the first alert level, activate the chips and bring information about mom's note to everyone without exception. They needed to save themselves and reduce the number of deaths as much as possible. The commentators talked about Bali for a bit, but then decided to return to Su Zio's broadcast. He was still standing by the toilet while meowing and banging sounds were heard outside the door. The cat and the doll fought fiercely with each other. The noise stopped and the main character decided to open the door. He looked outside the door. Commentators were afraid to look at the screens. The beaten cat immediately ran out of the toilet. She looked nervous. Commentators discussed her condition. The cat lay down on the sofa and began to lick its wounds. Suzaya walked up to her and smiled. He made an angry expression and asked if she dared to attack him again and if she wanted to repeat the fight. The cat looked terribly scared. She hid under the table in fear and began to tremble. The main character turned his back to her and said that he thought she was cool, but it turned out that she was just an ordinary coward. Commentators even began to feel sorry for the cat. Suzayo took the doll from the closet and brought it into the living room. He looked gloomily at the doll's shabby face. Her eyes immediately began to roll and she began to become covered in blood again. Suzayo noticed this, his pupils constricted. He stretched the doll's face and it immediately stopped raging. He threw her to the floor and told her she needed to learn to shut her mouth. The doll looked pitiful and even began to cry. He picked her up from the floor and threw her back into the toilet, saying that she was of no use, but she could become an excellent guard in the future. Suzayo rubbed his palms and said that he should rest. He sat on the couch and licked his lips, saying that he was tired of eating steaks every day. The main character wanted to eat more varied food when returning home. There was an empty plate on his table. The commentator said other governments are probably pissed. While he was watching a cartoon about pigs, something happened to the TV. A large female hand began to appear from there. A creepy woman in a pink dress came out of the TV. The commentators were scared. Suzayo looked at the monster in surprise, his mouth slightly open. He immediately ran to the toilet when the woman crawled half out of the TV. Commentators from different countries already thought that the main character was scared. He brought the doll and showed it to the woman. She looked at the toy in confusion. Suzayo started hitting the doll in the face, causing it to cry. He showed the beaten doll to the strange guest. The woman was confused and confused. However, a second later the woman jumped and attacked Suzayo. The guy grabbed the cat by the tail, calling her, and pulled her towards him, which she was not very happy about. The cat looked tense and scared, trying to escape by extending its claws and grabbing onto something. 
However, she didn't succeed. Suzayo grabbed her by the scruff of the neck and started hitting her on the head. The monstrous woman immediately stopped. She looked at the crying face of the doll, and then at the beaten face of the cat. The woman felt uncomfortable, and she no longer wanted to attack. She was stunned and did not move for some time. Commentators feared she was going to do something. But the woman suddenly began to bow deeply to Suzayo, as if apologizing to him. She walked over to the TV and began to climb back into it. A commentator from another country was impressed by the guy's intelligence. The main character let go of the cat and threw the doll on the floor. He praised himself, saying that he was very smart. Suzayo tilted his head down and closed his eyes, saying that woman was not so brave, so she quickly slipped away. Even the US broadcast viewer wanted to support Suzayo and the long country. A discussion was taking place in the Zuzu conference room. The man adjusted his glasses and said that Suzayo is very good, so he ordered that a cooperation proposal be sent to Long Country immediately, because they need to maintain good relations with them. In Britain, a man in military uniform ordered his subordinate to provide the latest information to the Long Country. The subordinate immediately agreed with him. A bespectacled woman from the United States displeasedly asked if Suzayo had any incredible talent. The man with the mustache from East Island didn't understand how the main character's actions could cause such a big response. He said that from now on they will monitor Suzayo's every move, because they cannot allow him to glorify his country even more. In Long Country, a man with glasses walked up to his boss and said that they had just received a cooperation proposal from Zukyu Country, and they had also been given fresh information about strange conversations. He was told that their real goals were not yet known to them. The man in the Chinese suit said that Su Zhao had exceeded their expectations, and he would still succeed in the test. A wrinkled man in a green suit said they still had one more chance to give a clue. He suggested taking advantage of this at the most critical moment so that Su Zhao would be guaranteed to win. The clock hands continued to tick. The main character stood at the stove and fried a steak in a frying pan, adding pepper to the dish. He stopped abruptly when he heard a strange noise. A woman in shoes walked towards him. Her skin looked pale and had cadaverous marks. He turned around and saw the same woman who had already appeared one night while he was sleeping. Her face looked creepy. Half of her face was covered with white hair. Her eye glowed bright red. The main character remembered that Rule 13 said that sometimes a strange woman will appear in the house, whom you can trust and need to talk to. He understood that if the rule was correct, then all he had to do was welcome her. Suzayo frowned slightly, sweat dripping down his face. He put the steak on his plate while the woman stood behind him. The main character knew that he had to go against the rules in order to receive protection from his skill. Commentators did not understand where she came from. Suzayo, holding a plate in his hands, walked past the woman without paying any attention to him. The viewer of the broadcast realized that the woman reminded him of the one that crawled out of the cat's body. Suzayo walked into the living room and called the cat while the strange woman followed him. He placed the plate on the table and turned, calling out to the cat again. The guy started looking under the table, under the sofa and in the bedroom, looking for the cat. He was slightly confused when he realized that the cat had disappeared. He suggested that she might have something in common with this woman. The corners of Suzayo's lips drooped. He assumed that the cat was offended and therefore she decided to turn into this woman for revenge. He thought that this woman might be the mother who left the note. The main character decided to look at her again, in case he finds clues. He turned around, but the woman was not where she stood. Suzayo began to look around, not understanding why she suddenly appeared and disappeared just as abruptly. The commentator noted that the two women were slightly different, but at the moment he could not say in what way and suggested that they just pay closer attention. Suzayo went into the kitchen, but he didn't see anyone there either. At the same time, the woman began to appear in the houses of other candidates. The woman stood in front of the Zuku candidate while he had a steak cooking on the stove. He realized that the woman was not harming him, which means Rule 13 was still true. He looked at the woman slightly confused. After that, he smiled and extended his hand to her, introducing himself to her, and then asked who she was. Through the mop of hair one could see a slight smile on the woman's face. She disappeared, leaving behind a dark aura. The guy was confused and tense. He noticed a note on the tabletop. The candidate took the sheet in his hands and read what was written there. The note said, I am not me, but I am not me. The guy didn't understand what this could mean. The spectators also did not understand what was happening. They said that Russian and US candidates also received notes. They realized that Suzayo did not receive the note. The main character looked at the sofa and saw that a cat was climbing onto it. Suzayo guessed that the cat and the woman were actually the same person. 
he was glad that he did not get close to the cat, otherwise no one knows what this would have led to. He looked intensely at the cat. She looked angry and dissatisfied. Night fell, dark red clouds covered the sky. That night, except for John and Suzio, the others took the cat into the bedroom. John closed his eyes tightly while he slept. There was a noise outside his bedroom door. Commentators suggested that his cat had also transformed. Cat Suzio was sitting on the sofa at this time. Her eyes were very red. She stood on her hind legs, stretching her back. Commentators discussed everything that was happening on the broadcast. The cat's back was torn open and a woman began to crawl out of it. She stood on the floor and the cat's body disappeared. The viewers of the broadcast were scared. She took a step forward, clicking her heels. She began to slowly walk towards Suzio's bedroom. The woman began to pull the door handle. Commentators were very worried about the main character. The woman realized that the door did not open and it was locked. She gripped the doorknob, bending it. After that, the woman completely broke off the door handle. She threw the broken handle at the doll, which had been sitting near the door all this time. The doll's gaze became sinister and creepy. She raised her head, looking at the woman. The doll jumped up, attacking the strange woman. The live broadcast image is noisy again. The audience actively discussed what was happening. They sent emojis expressing their opinions and guesses. One woman even wanted to marry Suzio. When the main character came out of the bedroom, yawning, the broadcast returned to normal. He scratched his head in confusion when he saw that the doll was torn and there were traces of blood around. Suzio realized that the woman was coming again, but he thought of leaving the doll at the door so he was able to get some sleep. The guy picked up the wounded and bloody doll, saying that he would sew her up since she had been protecting him all night but asked not to blame him for his skills. The doll's face became normal again. Only drops of blood remained. Suzio carefully handled the thread and needle, saying that he was sewing up the doll not only out of the kindness of his heart. There are still a few days until the end of the test, so he will still need it. The doll was sitting on the sofa, it looked like new. Suzio walked to the bedroom door and decided to fix the handle. He looked at the through hole where the door handle used to be. The main character took out the tools and began to repair, saying that although the handle itself was battered, the lock had survived, so you can lock the door. A slightly bent handle was inserted into the door. He stretched his shoulder and sighed, saying he was done. He turned around and looked at the living room. Looking at his watch, the guy wondered if it really took him four hours to sew up the doll and fix the door. He realized that it wouldn't take that long which meant that the time on the clock was moving faster than in previous days. Rule 14 talks about this, so you can't rely on the clock. However, Suzio knew that the clock was the only source of accurate time. He took his hands on the watch and asked how to tell the time if the watch could not be relied upon. The main character smiled and raised his finger up, saying that he needs to look at everything from the other side, because he is a rebel. He realized that he needed to set an alarm for a specific time. Soon John from the USA noticed that something was wrong with the watch. He took them in his hands, looking at the speed of the arrows. John was a little confused. She and Suzio disagreed, but both began to doubt the accuracy of the time. The rest didn't care much about the clock. The Zuku candidate was sleeping without paying attention to the clock. A candidate from Russia was involved in sports, lifting weights. Pasha from Pakistan was eating something with a happy face. The candidate from Great Britain looked around, not noticing anything. Jai Chuingen sat on the floor and scratched his bald head with a confused face. All participants, except John, made the same choice as Suzio, trusting the watch. Suzio sat in the living room and watched TV. The woman who had previously climbed out of the TV was now dancing on the screen. The audience noticed that it was somehow quiet today, and all the candidates were also calm. The candidate from Great Britain stood in the living room. She said that it was calm today and decided to see what was happening outside. She remembered that Rule 15 said she was allowed to go outside, but she had to watch her shoes. The girl pulled the front door handle, saying that if she received any clues from outside, she would greatly get ahead of the other candidates and increase the likelihood of passing the test. As soon as she opened the front door, the sinister forces of strange conversations began to enter the house. The girl's pupils narrowed and she opened her mouth. Viewers said it was her own fault. A system window has appeared. A participant from the UK is immersed in a world of strange conversations. The countdown has begun. The commentators were sincerely happy about this, wishing Suzio good luck. The British government was doomed. They shouted that they did not want to die. Fifth day, 8 a.m. The Suzio doll was torn again and there was blood on it. The main character left the bedroom and saw that there was again a bloody mess at the door to the bedroom. He took the doll in his hands and said that he had only sewn it up yesterday, and now it was torn again. 
he didn't understand if that crazy woman wanted him dead that much. The doll was again a defense. The main character said that he stitches up every day, and then the woman tears off her arms and legs again. He asked how long she would last. Commentators called him gentle. He threw the doll into the toilet and said that it did not allow him to sleep well at night, so he would sit with the cat during the day. He locked the door to the toilet. Commentators said he doesn't seem as gentle anymore. A fight immediately broke out in the toilet. Suzio said with a smile on his face that he would cook some noodles while they were fighting. The water in the pan was actively boiling, and steam was emanating from it. Suzio walked towards the sofa with the noodles, but saw a strange woman sitting on the floor near the table. She stared at him with her dark eyes at him. The main character tensed slightly as he looked at her. Commentators even thought he was scared. But Su Zio sat right next to the woman, which surprised her greatly. Commentators began to worry about the guy. Pasha sadly turned to the cat and apologized to her, saying that he believed Su Zio from the country of Long. The setting sun illuminated the living room. The fifth day will soon end. Of the six people, only Su Zio, John and Pasha killed the cat. The main character sat on a chair and sighed tiredly, asking why the woman didn't come. The cat was lying on the floor. Commentators were surprised that he was waiting for a woman. Pakistani ministers looked happy. One of them gloated and said that Suzio looked perplexed. He hoped that the main character would die. John looked at his watch with a creepy face and thought that the watch was definitely lying, because it was written that the cat had to be killed before 12 o'clock. John began to smile madly. He said the current time is 12.01. He had the feeling that the clock was going faster, which meant that it was not yet 12 o'clock. He cut the cat in half with a knife, continuing to smile creepily. Pasha was sitting on the sofa next to the cat. He was surprised when the government told him he had to get rid of the cat. Suzio touched the doll with his finger. He assumed that someone else had read the information from the note, so the cat was killed. He looked at the doll with an awkward grin and said that it was clearly not a simple one. There were still candidates from Zhukyu and Russia, they looked tense. Jai Chuengen and Pasha looked confused. John licked the knife with a creepy face. Suzio sat on a chair. He turned around sharply. After that, he got up and headed to the toilet. He pulled the door handle sharply. There was a bloody doll and a dead cat in the toilet. He looked at the doll, then looked at the exhausted corpse of the cat. Suzio was confused looking at this, because before they were just fighting, the doll definitely had no intention of killing her. He picked up the note. The note says, If you kill the cat before 12 o'clock, I will find you in the evening. He put the note back on the table with a puzzled face. Suzio didn't understand what he was talking about. He raised one eyebrow at the note, asking if this was a new rule. He thought that if this would affect something, then he should resist and do it his way. The main character made a thoughtful face and thought that if it was the woman who left the note, then she could easily kill him, so why should she bother leaving a note? So this note must mean something. Suzio was eating noodles with a happy face while this woman was sitting next to him. He savored the noodles with chopsticks. The audience thought he was cool. He finished the noodles and put his chopsticks on his plate. The guy was wiping his face from the broth when suddenly he noticed another note. He walked up to it and was about to read it. The clock almost struck 12. The cat's body arched unnaturally and a grin appeared on her face. A hand escaped from the cat's body. After this, the woman completely crawled out of the cat's body. Suzio felt uncomfortable. He covered his mouth and thought that if he had known that this woman was sitting in the cat, he would not have looked. The woman turned to the main character and thanked him. She looked at him gratefully and smiled. The spectators were perplexed. Suzio smiled awkwardly and asked why she was thanking him. The woman became embarrassed and said that she was the one who left notes with the rules and became part of it all. But in this place she could only remain in the form of a cat. The woman began to cry and sadly said that here she was waiting for her real child. She turned to Suzio, who was holding the doll, and said that she knew that she would never wait. She thanked the guy again and said that she felt the energy of her child from him. The woman smiled sincerely while still crying and said that her child was probably the same as Suzio and lived freely in the outside world. She missed him very much, but she can no longer see him. The woman waved to him and thanked him for helping her break free of control. Now that she had found her true identity, she began to disappear and said her final goodbyes. After that, only the dismembered corpse of the cat and Suzio with the doll remained in the room. The main character looked at the doll and sighed sadly. He said he should have known sooner. He asked the doll if she was her child and said that it was not surprising that she chose to kill the cat so that the woman would not suffer. Tears appeared in the doll's eyes. Suzio now understood why the woman didn't do anything to him during the day, because she was real then. But at night she was under control. Suzio looked at the doll sympathetically and stroked its head. 
He said she could cry if she wanted. He hoped that her mother would understand that she was always there for her. The main character said that wherever mom goes, she is probably happy. The doll's tears fell on the cat's corpse. A system window appears. Candidate sues Io. Congratulations on successfully passing the test mom's note. Time spent, 5 days. Reward for completing, doll, monster resistance plus 1, resistance percentage, 1. Description of the doll, part of the world of strange conversations, will ensure your safety. Description of resistance, once the resistance percentage reaches 100%, you will become completely immune to the strange. Suzio looked at the system window blankly. He asked how he managed to complete the test in just five days and whether the rule about the duration of the test applies. Commentators realized that they had all been misled. Suzio wanted to take the doll, but his hand suddenly hurt. He lifted his sleeve and saw a skull tattoo. He looked at the tattoo in disbelief. The commentator reminded that the candidate can keep the awarded talent. Suzio continued to look at his rebel tattoo. He grinned widely and laughed, saying that he also made some extra money. A system window has appeared in Long Country. Congratulations to Suzio for successfully passing the test. He receives awards, and the life expectancy of all citizens of the country long increases by 10 days. Residents cheered, pointing at the screen. They said that they were very happy, and the increase in life expectancy immediately began to cure people's diseases. The townspeople rejoiced and smiled. They shouted that they had won and it was their turn to celebrate. In the US government, people were angry because Su Zio won. He has overtaken their country, and now the authority of the United States will fall. The man tried to calm him down, saying that they still had a chance. The mustachioed man turned to him and rudely asked what they should do now, because they lost to the long country and all their partners were running over to them. Things were no better on the East Island. The man in the suit asked why the US couldn't give John a clue and why no one told Jai Chuang in to kill the cat. He shouted that John suffered several defeats in a row in front of Su Zio. A system window appears, Su Zio will be returned to the real world. He began to slowly move, surrounded by blue pixels. Suzio moved. The living room became empty. A system window appears. Candidates will continue to participate in the next test, which will take place in three days. We wish you good luck and look forward to getting started. The main character returned to the real world and immediately became a new hero. People on the streets cheered him on and praised him. A crowd gathered around Suzio. Soon after, Pasha also completed his test without any problems. In the world of strange conversations, only John, Jai Chuangan and their Zuku and Russia candidates remained. Pasha looked happy, his body covered in a blue glow as he moved. A terrifying woman appeared in front of everyone at the same time. She had a creepy smile on her face that showed her teeth. John looked at her and said in panic that she herself ordered the cat to be killed, which he did. The woman grabbed him cruelly by the neck. John began to cry and began to sit up from suffocation. He asked why she was doing this. The woman lifted him off the floor and said that he had made the right choice, but time had passed. John said that this couldn't happen, he had to have time left. The woman's smile grew even wider, her eyes narrowed. John didn't believe it. He asked if he should have relied on the watch and if last night had lasted too long. Before cutting off his head, John realized that then time began to go correctly, and he was misled. John's severed head lay on the floor, with a post-mortem grimace of horror on his face. At this time, all the other participants were horrified because the woman got out of the cat. The woman began to attack each of them, saying that time was up and they had failed the test. All three were eliminated. A system window has appeared. Candidates from the USA, Zuku, Russia and the East Island are immersed in the world of strange conversations. The countdown has begun. A man from the US leadership said that they have all the information they need. He hit the table, angry at John's defeat. The blonde man ordered that chips that could counter strange conversations be immediately sent to everyone. The East Island government initially breathed a sigh of relief, saying they had purchased American chips. They then looked at the screen and saw a huge hand with eyes and a mouth attacking their cities. They shouted that mom's note had reached them. Three days have passed. Suzio sighed as he looked at the wad of money in his hands. He said it was time to go back to the world of strange conversations. He sat on the sofa waving money. The main character said that he had not yet enjoyed his new car enough. A system window appears, Su Zio from the country of Long, welcome to the world of strange conversations. Current mission, a train leaving for the distance. The main character began to open his eyes. He saw that he was in the sixth car, sitting on a bunk. A system window appeared, several countries were randomly selected to participate. Long country, UK, Bali, Russia, Zuku, Korea, East Island and Pakistan. 
Su Zio thoughtfully read all the information that was provided to him. A system window appears, dear candidates. This time you go to the cemetery of the Bloody Palace. On the train you will be the conductors. Before you start your work, change into your work uniform. Remember the number of the carriage you are in, and also read the rules of the conductor. Reminder, the train's estimated arrival time at its final destination is three days. Suzio put his hand on the bed. After that, he began to leave the compartment, thinking that he needed to find the rules as quickly as possible. He went out into the corridor and saw a suitcase there. His eyebrows rose and his pupils constricted. The main character ran to the suitcase standing at the end of the room. Opening the suitcase, he found a uniform and a notebook. Suzio put on his uniform and adjusted his tie. He was wearing a cap, shirt and jacket. Crew rules, there may be strange passengers on the train. Regardless of appearance, everyone should be treated well. The first rule, when faced with difficult passengers, you need to contain your anger and irritation within yourself. Second rule, do not pay attention if passengers defecate and smoke in the compartment. Third rule, things often get lost in a compartment, so a passenger may ask for your help. You have the right to refuse, but if a child comes to you, you must help him. Fourth rule, do not interfere with children running around on the train. They are still kids. Fifth rule, food is delivered directly to the carriage. You should not pick it up at the junction of the carriages. Rule six, sometimes passengers from other carriages can come to visit. If you are offered to eat fried pork, do not refuse. Seventh rule, there is only one passenger in each compartment, but not everyone has meat. Eighth rule, the conductor is not allowed to leave the carriage. After eight in the evening, the lights must be turned off. Ninth rule, none of the passengers should see the crew rules. Otherwise, these people must be dealt with immediately. Tenth rule, after 12 o'clock at night, please do not pay attention to everything that happens in the carriage. The main character carefully read all the rules listed in the red notebook. He flipped through it and noticed that the last page had been torn out. He realized that the crew must follow more than 10 rules. Suzio frowned, squinting his eyes. He assumed that the last page was hidden somewhere in the carriage, and if there were no passengers yet, he would find the page first. The main character walked confidently along the carriage corridor. He went into every compartment, looked under the tables, looked in every possible place. Commentators began to discuss that compared to Suzio, the other candidates look stupid. But after all, their countries were under the onslaught of strange conversations, so they are tense. The main character straightened his cap. He looked all over the carriage, but still couldn't find the last page with the rules. Suzio turned back, thinking that everything was quite strange. He looked at the passages to the neighboring cars. Red crosses were painted on them, which meant that the passages were blocked. He wondered what was in those carriages. Suzio sat down on his bed. He decided to dig in his jacket pocket. There was a doll from the previous test lying there. Commentators were very interested in what would happen next. Suzio noticed that the doll was looking at the pillows and assumed that there was something there. He started digging through the pillows. While feeling one of them, he found something. These were the remaining rules. Rule 11. If your passenger wants to exchange pillows with you, give him the best one. Twelfth rule. No matter what happens, do not open the window under any circumstances. Rule 13. Animals cannot be brought into the carriage. If you see any wildlife, move out of its sight as quickly as possible. Rule 14. If one of the passengers gets injured or the disease relapses, think about what you can do about it. Rule 15. Communication between carriages will be established during the distribution of food. Other passengers can sneak into your carriage while the door is open. Rule 16. In addition to lunch, beer, sunflower seeds and other drinks are sometimes sold in the carriages. If you are offered, refuse. Rule 17. Midnight to 6 in the morning is the most dangerous time. If someone calls you, do not answer. Suzio examined the lost last page with satisfaction. He hid the notebook with the rules in his pocket. He was sitting in the compartment, but screams were heard outside the door. The man was dragging his suitcase and shouting to let him carry his luggage. At the end of the corridor there was a woman with children, and next to the compartment there were two guys. One of them was smoking, and the second asked him for a lighter. Suzio walked up to them and called out, startling them. He took off his cap and shouted that smoking was prohibited. Commentators realized that the main character was again going against the rules. With one movement of his hand, he took the guy's cigarettes away. Suzio broke the cigarettes and reminded them that smoking is prohibited. The guys were at a loss. One of them asked why he was preventing them. The main character tapped on the sign that indicated that smoking was not allowed in the carriage. He asked for cigarettes on the floor and had already begun to leave. The guy with the goatee rudely asked what was wrong with smoking and whether the main character wanted them to die during the three days of the trip. 
the second guy said that they would have a hard time, and Suzio was probably secretly running around to smoke. The guy with the beard invited his friend to smoke in the toilet and see what the main character would do. Suzio turned to them and grabbed the offender by the jacket. He said you shouldn't get yourself into trouble. The passenger immediately began to turn into a monster with red eyes and a huge mouth. Commentators were tense and thought that the main character would die. But Suzio began to take the doll out of his jacket. He showed it to the frantic passenger, after which he immediately calmed down. The doll's smile became wider, and its eyes became redder and scarier. The guy fell to the floor in fear. He was in shock. Commentators praised Suzio. The main character turned to the offenders and angrily ordered them to behave decently. He pointed his finger at the mother and child who were sitting on the floor. Suzio shouted that the woman should not let her child run wild here, otherwise he will punish him. The woman displeasedly took the crying child in her arms and said that he was a terrible conductor, and she did not understand how one could behave this way with passengers. A viewer said that Suzio is really cool and does not allow himself to be controlled. The carriage was clean and everyone behaved decently. The main character smiled and said that this was exactly the result he wanted. Commentators decided to take a look at the East Island candidate. His name was Akiro Ibe. It was a young guy with blonde hair. He asked passengers not to smoke and to put away their cigarettes. They continued to tar and asked what was wrong with smoking and what he would do to them. Akiro Ibe tried to explain to them, but they immediately began to beat him and insult him. The guy tearfully asked not to hit him. Finally, one of the passengers spat on him, after which they began to leave. Akiro Ibe sat on the floor and cried, saying that this was a terrible and vile way of humiliation. Commentators laughed at him, after which they decided to look at the candidate from Russia. Nikolai, a participant from Russia, raised his hands in the air and shouted that smoking was not allowed here. One of the spectators exclaimed that he is the owner of the S-rank leadership skill, which is that thanks to this skill, his words represent absolute authority in front of the passengers, and they will listen to his words. The passengers, fearfully lowering their heads, obeyed him. Nikolai sat down at the table, exercising with dumbbells. People were discussing Suzio's unknown skill, and why his skill had not been announced until now. Meanwhile, Suzio walked along the carriage with his baton on his shoulder. A voice from behind the door told him that they had brought his breakfast. The main character, putting one hand on his hip, asked incomprehensibly about breakfast. On the tray was a box containing two chopsticks. The man let go of the food cart. He then disappeared into the fog outside the door, and Suzio thought that he thought the carriages were connected. He wondered where the fog came from here. Looking at the food, he wondered if it was an independent carriage. He thought that, in any case, the eighth rule said that the conductor was forbidden to leave the carriage. The door slammed behind the main character and he decided to think about it after eating. Sitting down on a chair, he began to eat breakfast with gusto. Viewers said that the fifth rule states that you cannot pick up food at the carriage junction, but Suzio seems to have no intention of following the rules any longer. Someone came into his room and said hello. The main character looked at the man with a pillow in his hands. The old man said that this pillow was too hard and he couldn't get used to it. He asked if he could replace it. Suzio thought that this was a test, and the eleventh rule looked ordinary, but it was written on a torn page. He thought that he already knew about this rule, but what was the point of changing pillows? He thought that he might not have realized that the last page was hidden in the pillow, and then perhaps he would have read the rules. The main character, getting up from his chair, asked if he wanted to exchange pillows with him. The man said yes. Suzio refused him with a villainous grin. The man's eyes widened in shock. As he left, he grumbled dissatisfiedly, why tease the old man if he doesn't want to change? The main character looked at the pillow in his hand, which was shrouded in dark energy. Meanwhile, Nikolai, imposingly putting his hands behind his head, refused the old man. Most chose to refuse the exchange, after which they found the rest of the rules page. However, three candidates from small countries agreed to the exchange, including the country of Champa, which was just getting into strange conversations. The old man cordially thanked the guy from the country of Champa. Meanwhile, in the conference room of Champa country, people were shouting angrily about him being a fool. The guy exclaimed that he couldn't stay here because it was hard to watch. The man, sweating nervously, told him not to worry and offered to send him a hint. A dialogue box appeared in front of the guy's face, and he asked about one of the three clues being used, and whether the pillow was really that important. Viewers of the broadcast said that this poor child does not understand anything, and it was necessary to follow the example of Suzio, who examined his pillow in advance. The main character stretched tiredly. The audience asked what he would do now. Someone in the carriage loudly exclaimed that things were missing. 
The tin can fell to the floor. Suzio looked into the carriage in amazement. The woman asked the people around her if they had changed her noodles with sauerkraut. She demanded that it be given to her. The guy asked if she was crazy and who needed her noodles. The main character thought that, according to the third rule, things often get lost in carriages, and if a passenger needs help, he has the right to refuse him, but only if it is not a child. The woman exclaimed irritably that he was talking too rudely to her. Suzio thought that he should do the opposite. Putting his hand on the woman's shoulder, he told her with a sly smile not to worry, because he would help her find her noodles. Recoiling, the woman said hesitantly that he shouldn't worry about it. Smiling awkwardly, she said it was just noodles and she could eat something else. Suzio smiled gracefully and said that it was his responsibility to take care of the passenger's property. He said that the noodles are also considered property, so she can rely on him. The other passengers admired the conductor enthusiastically. An elderly woman suddenly opened the door and called out to the conductor. She said that her child was missing and he needed to be found urgently. The woman, approaching her, told her not to worry, because their guide was very good, and he would definitely help her. The main character turned away and said no. Everyone around was petrified from shock. Viewers of the broadcast asked whether Suzio could be so cold. The woman, turning to him, said that compared to a child, noodles are not so important, and it is better to help with the search for the child first. The main character said that this comes first for him, so he will find noodles first, because otherwise there will be nothing for her to eat. He looked at the older woman with a confident grin. The elderly woman clenched her teeth in irritation. Burning with anger, she went out into the corridor and said that she could handle it herself. Suzio walked out into the corridor and said that he went to look for noodles. The woman thanked him hesitantly. The clock showed 7.20. Leaning his back against the wall, the main character thought that he had searched the entire carriage, but did not find any noodles. Wiping his forehead, he thought that there was only one place left. He slowly began to walk towards the toilet. Suzio stood in front of the toilet door with his hand on his hip. Frowning decisively, he opened the door to the toilet. Inside, a little boy was eating noodles from the toilet. Smiling widely with his five-toothed mouth that emanated a stench, he asked if he wanted one too. The main character winced from the terrible smell and sight. He noticed a small dog behind the boy. The dog's eyes rolled up with an ominous red glare, disproportionate to its pretty body. Pursing his lips, Suzio thought that there was clearly something wrong with this dog. He remembered the train rules from 11 to 15 and thought that rule 13 said that animals were not allowed on the train. The main character slowly took the doll out of his jacket. With a sharp movement, he directed the doll's face towards the dog. An elderly woman entered the toilet and exclaimed that she had finally found it. Grabbing the boy by the collar, she asked how many times she had asked him not to eat everything, but he was again disturbing people. She displeasedly asked why he could not behave obediently. Adjusting his cap, Suzio thought that he had been prevented from getting down to business. He opened his eyes tensely, he thought that the dog had disappeared. Standing in the empty toilet, he thought that it would appear later anyway, and all that remained was to resolve the issue with the noodles. There was an inscription on the carriage window, 2B. The main character apologized to the woman and said that her noodles were eaten by the missing child mixed with feces. The woman ran out of the compartment, holding the company back with her hand, and the main character, scratching the back of his head, praised himself for doing a good deed again. Viewers of the broadcast, laughing at what happened, asked what the other candidates did. Someone said that everyone had the same choice, find the noodles or find the baby. Everyone decided to find the child first, ignoring the noodle request, and when most saw the poodle, they decided to run for their lives. However, a small part of the candidates began to pet the furry because they never saw the last page with the rules. And when they discovered something unusual, it was already too late. Five countries, including Lupu, Champa and Myanmar, are immersed in a world of strange conversations. Country Lupu, Conference Room the man shouted that they had just gotten rid of his mother's note, and not even a few days had passed when a new misfortune occurred. The man, falling to the floor, shouted to quickly contact the Long Country and offer them 5 million tons of grain in exchange for the latest chips. Long Country Conference Hall The man said that these small countries that were previously friends with the United States are only trying to make friends with them now, and they are real hypocrites. He said that, However, they had been caught in strange conversations five times, so their authority had been greatly undermined before. The man, raising his palms, said that they would arrange for the chips to be delivered, but they would not arrive until a week later. After eating, Suzio began to rest, and it seemed that he was the only one who came here to rest. If other candidates knew about this, they would die of envy. Someone in the carriage shouted that he wanted to play. 
The main character woke up and sat up on the bed, rubbing his eyes. Looking out into the corridor of the carriage, he shouted to him not to shout in the carriage. A woman with a ridiculous hairstyle asked how the conductor could treat a child like that, because he was still small and did not understand anything. Stretching his hands, Suzio said that it is no wonder that there are so many disobedient children divorced these days, because the problem is their parents. He said that since they did not want to listen to his words, there was nothing else to do. The woman asked with a grin who was afraid of him. She said he wouldn't do anything. The main character hit her hard in the face with a backhand. The red-eyed woman touched her reddened cheek. She angrily asked how he dared to hit her and shouted that she would kill him. Suzio kicked her in the chest. Falling to the floor, she screamed that the conductor had hit her. Viewers said that even though the rules say not to disturb children, he still decided to teach them a lesson. And it is best to teach a lesson not to children but to their parents. The small child looked fearfully at the main character, who was stretching his shoulder. Suddenly Suzio froze in place. The woman behind him was approaching him with an ominous expression on her face. One of the spectators exclaimed that she had transformed. Holding the doll in his hand, the main character asked if this was the power of another. He said he had something up his sleeve too, and it looked like the lesson needed to be taught a little differently. Suzio threw the doll at the woman. Viewers exclaimed why the broadcast was interrupted every time at such a crucial moment. Someone said that this is being done so that they understand that not all the secrets of strange conversations will always be available to them, and something will always remain behind the scenes. They decided to turn their attention to Akiro Ibe. Akiro Ibe stood awkwardly in front of the woman with the child. Smiling awkwardly, he modestly asked if they could be quieter. The woman asked what he said with a sinister smile. Akiro Ibe fell to the floor in fear and, apologizing, said that he shouldn't have said that. One of the spectators said that they should have followed Suzio's example rather than kneeling before them. Someone said that perhaps this is the way it is on the eastern island, but it is better not to use your traditions here. Another viewer exclaimed that Suzio's broadcast had resumed. A beaten woman lay on the floor of the carriage. The little child, trembling in fear, said that he would not behave like that again. The main character with an ominous smile said that since he sincerely repents, he will not torture him. The child thanked him fearfully. After hitting the child's mother again, Suzio told them to rest. As he left, he smiled contentedly, and the audience wondered what kind of psychological damage the doll had caused them. The girl walked down the corridor, offering to buy beer, sunflower seeds, instant noodles and water. He asked the main character if he wanted anything, because she wouldn't take money from her colleague. Suzio remembered the 16th rule, which stated that he must refuse offers of food outside of lunchtime. He said that since it was free, he would gladly take more. The girl smiled back. The main character looked at the products in his hands with a satisfied smile. The carriage door swung open. Suzio thought that if the door was opened, the conductor might come out. He wondered if other people could do it. He looked thoughtfully at the snacks in his hands. Sitting down on the bed, the main character said that no matter how much he loved snacks, he definitely wouldn't eat them now. UK candidates. When candidates learned they could get free snacks, some happily accepted the offer. However, everyone understands that this is a world of strange conversations, and even if the food looks delicious, it may in fact be cat food. Some accepted the snacks, but did not eat, leaving them in reserve. At night, all the candidates began to make their calculations regarding the rules. The UK candidate was sitting on the bed with a book in his hand. 1, 13 and 16, in general, can be considered correct, but rules 2, 4, 5 and 11 are incorrect. The rest is unclear. The lights in the carriage automatically turn off as soon as 22 arrives. Lying in bed, Suzio asked what kind of dog it was today and why it seemed like a toy. Frowning, he asked if it appeared earlier and how it should be treated. Turning over on his side, he decided it would be better to think about it after he'd had a good night's sleep. The sky was overcast with red and blue clouds, and it was 12 o'clock at night. Dark energy swirled next to an open bag of chips. The doll was floating in the air, and the main character asked what kind of movements it was. He said that this doll was starting to become alarming. Two red eyes flashed in a clot of dark energy. Suzio frowned, cursed and asked what was going on. The dog, shrouded in dark energy, jumped on the doll. The doll punched the dog in the face. They fell out of the room with a roar. One of the spectators asked whether the doll would be able to win, because the dark shadows look quite strange. The main character said that, judging by the sounds, the battle was very fierce. One of the spectators said that it seems that the strange thing has disappeared, because the doll looks very drooping. Another spectator said that she had not lost, and after this they would not dare to attack Suzio. 
the main character thought what it was, because it looked so familiar. The audience decided to look at the other candidates. The UK candidate was asleep in bed while a dog, shrouded in dark energy, was doing something in his room. The candidate suddenly opened his eyes and looked at the dog. The dog looked at him with a wide smile, revealing huge and numerous sharp teeth. Dark energy came from his compartment. Three countries are immersed in a world of strange conversations, including Great Britain and the U Principality. The viewer said that he thinks that the UK leadership is now quietly scolding, because they have not yet gotten rid of the past attacks of strange conversations, and now they have new ones. Another viewer said he understood why they were being attacked. He said that only those who took snacks from the conductor were attacked. He said he thought it was the snacks that were attracting those dark shadows, and those strange crunching noises that were heard everywhere spoke volumes. On the second day, the main character said that last night it was too dark, so now we need to carefully examine the crime scene. Picking up the book with the rules, he said that it seemed to be very shabby. He asked if it was all about stealing his snacks. Then he stood up with a grin. Suzio said that it looks like he will have to ask that girl with the cart to give him some more food today. Someone said that, judging by his smile, he had already guessed everything. Pu Wooly, looking under the bed, asked where the crew rules had gone. According to the 10th rule, none of the passengers should see the rules of the crew, and otherwise these people must be dealt with immediately. Grabbing his head, he said that this was the end. Someone asked why he was so worried, and whether the 10th rule was true. Another viewer said that if passengers saw the crew rules, all the candidates' weaknesses would be exposed to them. If a passenger uses crew rules to lure a candidate into a trap, it will be very difficult to get out. The woman was reading the crew rules with an evil grin. The main character said it was time to eat. He walked to the door of the carriage. Suzio said with a smile that he didn't know that today was a special lunch. The candidate from Great Britain appeared in the carriage and said that he was the conductor from the seventh carriage. In his hands was a bowl of food. One of the spectators said that he had died. The main character looked at him in slight amazement. According to the sixth rule, sometimes passengers from other carriages can come to visit, and if they offer to eat stewed pork, you cannot refuse. According to the seventh rule, there is only one conductor in each carriage, but not everyone has meat. The main character thought that the sixth rule said that sometimes passengers from other carriages could come to visit, but the seventh rule said that only one conductor was allocated per carriage. The UK candidate asked if he wanted to try it as it was only served on their carriage. Suzio agreed with a grin. He decided to have fun because he was bored anyway. Looking at the main character, who stood among the smoke with a doll in his hand, the audience noticed that the picture was becoming clearer and asked if the doll had gotten rid of the strangeness. The doll, with buttons for eyes, was shrouded in a red aura. The main character looked at the doll, and people on the broadcast admired it. He frowned and looked in the other direction. Looking at the British candidate, whose head was turned in the opposite direction, he said that he was the only one who had seen such a scene. As he left, he said that it seemed that strangeness could lie in dolls, animals, and even shadows, and if the source of the strangeness was identified, it should be eliminated immediately. During dinner, Suzio took the initiative and asked the conductor for more snacks, and then dutifully waited for nightfall. Raising his fist, he said it was time to have some fun. Smoke came out profusely from the man's mouth. Smoke filled the carriage corridor, swirling across the floor. The broadcast signal cut out, showing only white noise. One of the people at the long table said that they wanted to send him a hint, because who would have thought that he would guess that it was not a real guide? Five countries, including Bali, are immersed in a world of strange conversations. The bespectacled man asked why the Bali candidate was eliminated so quickly. Another man cursed and said that the candidate from Bali had been cruelly deceived because he had eaten the snacks in the hope that he could gain some advantage by doing so. But in fact it had been the other way around. Some time ago, the main character told a candidate from the UK that he would eat a little later. The guy said the food was still hot and he'd better try it now. Suzio said that he is used to leaving the best for last. He walked past him, and the guy fell silent. Turning his head in his direction, he told him to eat. His head turned 180 degrees and he screamed and asked why he wasn't eating. The main character asked with a grin if he was finally tired of pretending. The guy froze in fear. Suzio, sitting on the bed, said that he would help him. He smiled good-naturedly, and the guy opened his mouth in amazement. He said he could continue like this and asked if he could help him. The main character said that he would help him. His legs were just numb. The guy grabbed his arm, and Suzio said that if he moved him, he would be even more paralyzed. The guy frowned irritably. Clenching his hand into a fist, he shouted that he was just mocking him. When he left, he said that he would find another person. 
Su Zio said with a grin that there are no doors here. He mentally praised himself for being able to come up with the fact that the oral form and the immobilized body were two ideal excuses. The woman ran with all her might along the carriage. She told Pu Wooly that she urgently needed his help. Pu Wooly wondered if anyone needed to be saved. He fearfully thought that the 14th and 17th rules mentioned similar things, but they contradict each other and he did not know what to believe. The girl asked him whether he was going or not. Pu Wooly, rubbing his chin, asked not to rush him because he was thinking. The girl shouted that the man could not wait long. Pu Wooly said he's not going anywhere. The woman with a sinister smile and red eyes said that this was exactly what she had been waiting for. With her mouth wide open, she said that he had broken the rules and now he would stay here forever. The room flared with red energy. Korean member Pu Wooly dives into the world of strange conversations. Viewers said this is the second time Korea has plunged into the world of strange conversations. The main character was sleeping on the bed. Suddenly he heard some noise. Jumping out of bed, he said with a smile and a flashlight in his hand that he would really like to look at it. In front of him was the dog he had seen before. The system congratulated him on starting communication with the dog. Its loyalty depends on feeding. Once loyalty reaches its maximum, it will win the dog's complete favor. The dark general cannot go outside the carriage, much less outside the train. The main character thought with a grin that by continuing to feed it, he could gain favor. Putting his hand on his belt, he thought that it looked like he needed to stock up on snacks. Walking out into the corridor of the carriage, Suzio shouted to everyone to wake up and said that if they did not hand over their snacks within three minutes, he might be rude. The passengers jumped out of their bunks in amazement. The guy in the shirt said it was better to give it to him. Rushing towards the door, he shouted that he was too scary. The main character, showing the dog a large pile of snacks, told him to start eating. The dog looked at the snacks with a joyful sparkle in his eyes. Half an hour later, only empty packages remained around the dog. The system congratulated the main character on the fact that he successfully won over the Dark General, and now he will follow him. Suzio extended his hand to the Dark General. Patting him on the head, he said it was quite simple. The audience discussed his incredible luck. Third day, early morning. The main character, upon waking up, asked the dog why he was running in circles. He looked at the door next to which the dog sat. On the door it was written 8 car. Suzio exclaimed, shouldn't he be in the 6th car, and how did he end up in the 8th car? He remembered what the system had told him before he started work, to put on his uniform and remember the number of the car he was working on. The main character said that special attention was paid to this upon entering, and something must happen now. The system informed the candidates that their carriage numbers had undergone some changes, and they had two options, remain in place and do nothing, or go through the junction of carriages to their own. Suzio said, as expected, there is not the slightest clue. The audience was interested in what he would choose, because this is a very important decision, and if he makes a mistake, he will be doomed. They decided to look at Nikolai because he has leadership ability and he must make the right choice. Nikolai shouted and asked the guy what he should choose. The guy said that he had been in the second carriage before. Viewers said that the second one is correct, and the management should contact Suzio and inform him about it. Nikolai turned around with a smile and walked along the carriage corridor. Rubbing his chin, the main character thought that they would not be asked to remember the carriage number just like that, and the second option should be correct frowning. He thought that, moreover, the conductor with the cart always leaves from one place, and the fogs from car to car are created mainly for intimidation. Suzio walked towards the exit of the carriage and the audience praised him for being very smart. The candidate from Zuku country made the right choice by relying on his ability as a guide. Jervais from the country of Zuku walked towards the exit of the carriage with a confident grin. Guide, when a candidate faces difficulties during selection, he can use a talent that will immediately point him to the right path. Pakistan, Pasha, seeing Suzio's choice, Pakistan immediately sent a hint to their candidate, so he also decided to return. Jervais and Pasha entered the fog at the junction of the cars. Akiro Ibe sat trembling with his head in his hands. Some candidates decided not to move anywhere due to fear of fog. The rest remained because their homeland was unable to send clues due to the invasion of strange conversations. That's why they made the wrong choice. Selection time is over. Those who decided to return to their carriage survived. The rest will be killed. Ikiro Ibe exclaimed in shock, looking at the red dialogue box. Six countries, including the Eastern Island, are immersed in a world of strange conversations. A terrifyingly shaped creature with a huge red eye loomed over the frightened Ikiro Ibe. 
the main character returned to the sixth carriage. One of the spectators reminded the others about the 15th rule, communication between carriages will be established during the distribution of food. Other passengers can sneak into your carriage while the door is open. Suzayo thought that the food from the dining car had already arrived, and if he understood correctly, while he was crossing through the fog, someone had managed to sneak into his carriage. Standing in the corridor, he thought that there were about 40 passengers in the sixth car, and if someone else entered, there was a chance of finding him. Long Country Conference Hall The man asked if it was possible to somehow compare passengers in order to understand what exactly was being faked. Another said to send a tip if possible. A dialogue box stated that the prompt could not be sent because the candidate must make a choice at this stage. The man with the mustache exclaimed that these were very strange rules. The other man said that it seems like Su Zio can only rely on himself here. The main character looked at the dark general. The eyes on his contented face glowed red. One of the viewers said that, speaking of weirdness, the dark general is also part of it all, and he can help. The main character smiled. The dark general approached several passengers in turn, sniffing them. Looking at one of them, he frowned. The dark general started barking at the guy in the sweater. He grabbed his leg with his teeth, and blood began to flow from it. The guy ran away from the carriage in fear. The dialogue boxes say, the end. Candidate from Carriage 6, thank you for your participation. You taught the parent of a naughty child a lesson, dealt with the child himself, and also tamed the dark general. Congratulations on completing the distance train challenge perfectly. Result, 5 stars. Reward, Dark General, Weirdness Resistance plus 1. Currently the persistence is 2%. Description of the Dark General. He was waiting for an owner who could shelter him. Very loyal, omnivorous. If one day you wake up and find that the Dark General is not around, don't worry, he's just looking for food. Suzayo, patting the Dark General on the head, exclaimed that he was the main reward. He asked if he could take him and the doll to the next test. Three participants successfully passed the test. Suzayo from the Long Country, Nikolai from Russia and Jervais from the Zukyu Country. The Long Country's high-ranking officials were delighted. They sent an army to protect Suzayo and his family, and also wrote down everything Suzayo knew and hid it safely. Three days later, Suzayo went into the world of strange conversations again. The main character looked up. The following countries were randomly selected to take the test. Country Long, USA, Russia, Australia, Afghanistan, Argentina, Africa and so on. Suzayo thought it was a zoo. A man dressed in blue greeted him. He handed him a piece of paper. The main character looked at the piece of paper, and the man said that it was a guide to the zoo. He told him to always carry it with him in case he got lost. The cards featured a panda, a rabbit, a giraffe, an elephant, a lion, a tiger, a zebra, a mountain goat and a monkey. Suzayo thought that the rules were written on the back. The first rule, behave civilly, do not feed or tease animals. Second, don't be surprised if you find pink bunnies and blue elephants. When animals look at you, don't look away, otherwise they will attack you. Third, if you see an employee chasing an animal, help him, he will be very grateful. Fourth, the map is wrong. Don't trust her. Fifth, if you get lost, don't worry, rest on a bench. But if you get lost at night, be careful not to run into animals. Sixth, if you are hungry, you can eat food from the vending machine. Reminder, if you feel sick, try eating goat meat. Seventh, if necessary, contact the staff for help. Employees in blue and red clothing will be happy to help you. But if you see employees in black clothing, run. Eighth, the aquarium is a safe zone. Ninth, there are no aquariums in the zoo. Tenth, please keep silence in your heart. I am a person, not an animal. The main character asked if the tenth rule seemed strange. The audience agreed with him. Suzayo was surrounded by blue pixels. Looking around, he thought that there were no doors here. He thought that something was clearly wrong with these tourists. He summoned the dark general. A sign with a carrot pointed in the direction of the rabbits. A worker in blue with a tray in his hands was talking about giving out free carrots. Walking up to Suzayo, he handed him the carrots with a smile. One of the spectators said that the first rule says that you cannot feed animals. This employee is a provocateur. Kneeling down, the main character handed the carrot to the rabbits. The rabbits looked at the dark general in fear. He thought it was strange because he didn't see pink bunnies. He wondered if that meant the second rule was wrong. After throwing away the carrots, Su Zio said that it didn't matter and he lost interest because he thought it would be more difficult. Looking at the map, he said they needed to head south. At this time, a candidate from Afghanistan, Samit, sat down with the rabbits and said that they were very cute. The rabbit's eyes turned red and he bared his teeth threateningly. Rising to his feet, he said it was time for him to go. As he left, he said goodbye and waved. 
one of the rabbits quickly rushed after him. It jumped over the fence in one high leap. The rabbit grabbed onto Samet's neck, and he began to call for help. A worker in blue grabbed the rabbit by the scruff of the neck. Samet, cursing, shouted that he was a very cultured person. He asked why their pet attacked him and what manners it was. The worker, laughing, apologized and said that it was all due to their negligence, and they would immediately take action. Viewers said Samet's eyes turned red because he had to follow the rules and now he's done. At the same time in the southern part of the zoo, the main character thought that, according to the map, there should be horses, tigers and goats here. He wondered if there was even a hint of goats here, and if the map really was false. He decided not to rush to conclusions and go to the eastern part, because there should be elephants there. Suzio stood in front of an enclosure with elephants with rabbit ears. Scratching the back of his head, he asked if they were too big. He said they looked more like rabbits. Noticing something, he opened his eyes wide. An ordinary elephant approached the elephants with rabbit ears. A fight broke out in the enclosure, and the main character wondered what was happening here. The spectators said that the normal elephant died, and the result was a foregone conclusion, because he was alone against a dozen enemies. Suzio thought that he had a feeling that something was wrong here, but he couldn't say for sure yet. Suddenly he noticed that the elephants had turned into goats. The crowd of goats rushed towards the fence. The goats started banging their horns against the chain link fence, and the guy exclaimed that the goats were crazy. The worker in blue told them not to panic because it was a temporary riot. He asked them to go to the lion section because it was safe there. A crowd of people followed the blue-clad worker. Suzio wondered why the tourists were so obedient, and didn't they have any doubts. He wondered why he had to go to the section with the lions, and didn't the rules say that the safest place was the aquarium. Smiling, he said that he wouldn't mind watching because he might come across something funny. African participant Babru dives into the world of strange conversations. People were running away from huge red tentacles. The girl asked how he died. The guy, with his head down, said that it looked like he had been trampled by mad elephants. Another girl said it was a terrible way to die. The guy said it looked like you had to follow the staff into the lion area to be safe. The girl said it was better to watch Nikolai's broadcast because it was even more dangerous in the lion's zone. There was a steel lock on the gate. Nikolai asked the workers why there was a castle there. Hearing something, he turned around sharply. A huge lion attacked a woman, and one of the spectators said that his mistakes should not be repeated, and they should have been dead. But this is another deception. People, running away, shouted that the lions were attacking and asked to be released. Nikolai shouted that they were trapped. He began to climb over the fence, and the audience said that Suzio would also end up in the mouth of the lions. The main character opened his eyes, holding the dark general in his hands. There were two angry lions in front of him, and one of the spectators asked if the dark general could protect Suzio from two huge lions. Horrible red tentacles appeared from the dark general's mouth and rushed towards the lions. The tentacles lifted the lions off the ground, spraying blood. The dark general swallowed the lions whole. The main character asked with admiration that he could even eat lions. The man, with his palms folded in front of his face, said that Suzio brought them a lot of useful information, and those broadcasting the live broadcast must have realized that there was no point in hiding anything. The man with glasses said that he hoped that Suzio would provide them with a lot more useful news in the future, and one day they would get rid of the world of strange conversations. Slamming his hand on the table, the man with the mustache said that Long Country didn't even realize how lucky they were when it was Su Zio who came into the world of strange conversations. He said that he now receives support from two others, and most likely it will be difficult to catch up with him. USA Conference Room The guy, looking at the monitor, said that this was all because John wasted his S-rank skill last time. The other guy said that it was too late to speculate on this, and now they could only give a clue twice. He said they needed to do everything they could to make sure Thomas passed the test. Suzio picked up the Dark General and said that he was very cool. He noticed a guy climbing over the fence. The main character gave a command to the dog, and a tentacle rushed forward from his mouth. He ran out through the large iron doors, and one of the spectators exclaimed that such a small body had so much energy. Suzio said that he was the only one who managed to escape, and he is not like other tourists. He said he must have some secret. After some time, he saw a guy sitting on a bench, clutching his head. He was shaking violently, not raising his head. The main character said that he looked desperate. He asked what he had been through. Half an hour later he wrote something on paper, placing a sheet of paper on the bench. Having finished writing, the guy got up and left. Suzio, looking out from behind the tree, thought that he had left a note and he needed to see what it said. 
On a piece of paper it was written, I know that I cannot leave alive. The zoo came out of nowhere and brought us here. Visiting this zoo was the worst decision I have ever made. I was separated from my friend and I can't find him. I'm lost and there's no way out. This zoo is very strange, and the animals living here are monsters. I saw with my own eyes how a zoo guard turned into an elephant. He bravely rushed towards the monsters, and while protecting us, he was attacked by the monsters. Suzio asked in amazement that the guard turned into an elephant, and this is the same elephant. He continued reading the note, we are all infected. I'm scared and desperate. I've been here for more than three days, what should I wait for? If you see this note, I hope you can follow the rules and get out of here. Remember, you need to get to the aquarium as quickly as possible. The main character thought that it seemed that the exit was near the aquarium. He wondered where the aquarium itself was. Spectators discussed the fact that the rules stated that this is only a zoo and there are no aquariums here. Russia, conference room. The man with a receding hairline ordered a tip to be sent to Nikolai so that he would look for the note. Zukiu country, conference room. The man said that he needed to advise Jervis to find the note. Association of three countries, conference room. The man, clutching his head, swore at Samet and asked if nothing could be done. Afghanistan, conference room. The man ordered a tip to be sent. The radio said, current time, 1635. If tourists want to eat, they can go to the store and get food there. Reminder, the zoo closes at 18. If tourists remain after this time, we do not guarantee your safety. Looking at the radio, Suzio thought that it had already been so long. He decided that he needed to find a store because he didn't want to go hungry. The sign said, Zone with Goats. The main character wondered why there was a zone with mountain goats. Finding the store, he grinned and decided to go shopping. A blue-robed worker standing at the counter greeted him and said that they provide tourists with three portions of goat meat and drinks for free. He asked him to come and pick it up. Looking at the counter, he discovered meat specially prepared for tourists. Looking at the piece of paper, Suzio thought that the sixth rule does not prohibit eating goat meat bought from a vending machine. And it turns out that he still broke the rules. He found bottles with red bunny packaging on the shelf. Taking the bottle in his hand, the main character turned to the employee. He asked about the free drink being the blood of a hare. The worker smiled nervously and said that it was nothing. One of the spectators said that this man was hiding something. A spectator asked where he was taking the rabbit's blood. The worker picked up an armful of red bottles. One viewer recalled that the staff said they would definitely deal with the bunnies that Sam had encountered, and perhaps that's how they dealt with them. Another viewer said that, in this case, this drink can only be drunk at noon, otherwise problems will begin later. Nikolai from Russia took a package of goat meat. One of the spectators said that others also took only goat meat, ignoring the rabbit blood. Another viewer said that Samet also came to the store. He still had that crazy smile on his face. He began to pour the rabbit's blood into his mouth, his red eyes bleeding. Afghan contributor, Summit, dives into the world of strange conversations. People on the broadcast laughed at his stupidity. 22. The main character, sitting on a bench, thought that, based on the records, the zoo eventually destroys the will of people and turns them into animals. He thought that the phrase about being a man and not an animal was aimed at preventing the destruction of both the mind and remembering who they are. Putting the paper away in his jacket, Suzio said that he was sorry that after a whole day of searching, he could not find the aquarium, and the workers continued to insist that it was not there. Rising from the bench, he said that today it would be impossible to find anything worthwhile, and he would return to the store at night. Deep night, the main character slept on cardboard, covering himself with a jacket and placing a doll next to him. He opened his eyes and wondered who was there. Peeking out from around the corner, he began to look around. He noticed a worker in a black uniform. Visually he said that the seventh rule said to run away if he saw a man in a black uniform. He asked what he was waiting for. Viewers discovered him stealing food. One of them asked about how he shouldn't need food and whether it was possible that he was normal. Another viewer said that this means that the seventh rule is wrong, and we need to find out everything. Suzio ran after the worker. Going out into the street, he saw the worker turn the corner and thought that during the day there had been no fork here. The main character turned the corner after him. Finding a dead end in front of him, he wondered where he was. Frowning, he glanced to the side. Suzio found a note on the ground. The note read, I got lost while chasing a herd of rabbits. When I came to my senses, I could not find my friend. I didn't remember anything. When I asked the staff for help I was ignored. Rabbits are monkeys, elephants are rabbits, the first four white lions are monkeys, the fifth is a mountain goat. During the day, the zoo protects normal people. 
At night, the aquarium protects people. Don't forget that you are human. The main character thought that it looked like this man was another tourist. He wondered why he should wear workers' overalls. He assumed that he had changed his clothes in the aquarium, and apparently it was really safe there. Smiling, he thought that the exit might be located somewhere there. Viewers speculated that the recently disappeared road led to the aquarium. They discovered that Thomas from the USA also received the note. Thomas read the note, rubbing his chin. One viewer said he found the note thanks to a government tip. Another viewer said dissatisfiedly that he thought that he had found it himself, but he was just a copycat of Sue's I.O. Candidates from Ziku, Argentina and other countries are immersed in a world of strange conversations. One viewer asked why six candidates went into the world of strange conversations at once. Another viewer said that they fell asleep on a bench where the monsters found them. The next day, late night, the main character stood with his arms folded across his chest and his back leaning against a tree trunk. A viewer asked why the road doesn't appear since Suzio has been standing there all day. Noticing something, the main character looked to the side. A crowd of elephants and rabbits ran towards him. An employee in a blue uniform asked to help him stop them. According to the third rule, if he sees an employee chasing an animal, he needs to help him, and then he will be very grateful. Suzio said with a smile, of course. Putting his hands behind his head, he said, of course, I won't help. Meanwhile, a man in Arabic clothing shouted, forward. Several candidates still decided to help the staff. However, there was one thing candidates could never think of. The rabbit-headed man turned around, his red eyes blazing. Spectators wondered what it was and what would happen to the candidates. A scream was heard above the zoo. Several people with rabbit heads towered over the candidate. One of them was holding a large sledgehammer in his hands. The viewer said that it was not in vain that he worried about them. Iraq, Belgium, Burundi are immersed in a world of strange conversations. Suzio and the spectators noticed that the road appeared again at the same time as yesterday. The main character walked down the road with a smile, and the viewer said that he hoped that his guess was correct, and that this road leads to the aquarium. Thomas glanced at the note. One of the spectators said with a grin that Thomas also followed the note along the path, and if there really is a way out, he should thank Suzio. Nikolai, seeing the fork, asked where this road leads. Scratching the back of his head, he said that he had been here many times, but this was the first time he had seen this road. Suzio found himself opposite the aquarium. Rules for visiting the aquarium First, the aquarium has a separate seating area with jellyfish. Food is provided free of charge. You can safely take it. You cannot eat goat meat, even if it lies on the shelf. Second, there is only one road to the aquarium. Once you get here, don't stay more than three days. Third, this aquarium only houses marine life. But if you suddenly find a large elephant in the area with whales, don't worry, it's just a 3D projection. Fourth, there are no people in the aquarium. You can find a black uniform, put it on and signal for rescue. Fifth, the aquarium staff wears a red uniform. The workers clean every night at 12 o'clock. You can talk to them, but don't mention the zoo. Sixth, there is only an aquarium. There is no zoo. Seventh, the staff leaves at 6 in the morning after cleaning the aquarium. They cannot leave during this period. Eighth, break the rules at your own peril and risk. Suzio thought that the previous survivor was wearing a black uniform. Therefore the fourth rule was correct. Walking through the aquarium, he thought that he had to go against the rules, so he would not wear this. A huge elephant was swimming in the water. The main character thought that it was obvious that this was a real elephant, and not a projection. He decided to go inside and pulled the doorknob. He found himself in a room with an aquarium and a mattress. Suzio touched the aquarium and said that looking at the jellyfish makes him feel relaxed, and it was previously said that there is a very safe place. He asked whether the jellyfish themselves provided this security. Yawning, he said that he was tired. The main character lay down on the mattress and said that it was very comfortable here. He decided to sleep. After a while, Suzio opened his eyes. Looking at the dark general, he asked what was in his mouth and whether it was a diary. He flipped through the pages of the diary. On one of the pages it is written, I am a zoo worker, and every night I have the same dream. He's quite strange. Suzio asked which zoo we were talking about. Viewers asked what happened to Suzio and whether he lost his memory. The diary says, In my dream I turned into a drowned elephant. Moreover, I understood the speech of another elephant. You can't escape, this is your new home. I can't get into the mood for work and I think I'm sick. While working at the zoo, I had to follow some pretty strange rules. If a worker wants to leave the zoo, he will disappear without a trace. According to the rules, I must remember that the zoo exists on its own, and there is no aquarium. 
When tourists asked how to get to the aquarium, I always answered with a smile that it was not here. In the zoo you can often hear extraneous noises. The animals here are very strange, and their numbers are constantly increasing. This is nonsense, I need to keep working. But in fact, I really want to get out of here. The main character thought that the zoo was constantly mentioned here, and it seemed that he had forgotten about something. He extended his hand to the pen lying on the table. Suzio wrote on his hand, You are a human being, not an animal. He thought that this was a very familiar sentence, and perhaps it was the key to the exit. The audience wanted to see what was written on the other side, because there must be something important there. On another page it said, Hello, congratulations, you found the aquarium, and also found my diary. My personality is not that important, but you should remember my words. It is especially important that what is written should always remain visible. In the room with jellyfish you can relax and heal, but the jellyfish take away some of the memories. But this is just my guess. A zoo exists. The zoo has a road to the aquarium. You just need to wait for the right time to get there. You may have lost your memories of the zoo, but that's okay. The most important thing is to get to the aquarium. The zoo isn't that important anymore. Starting from the next line, everything will be extremely important, and it has to do with whether you make it out alive. Suzio rubbed his chin and wondered if he could sleep or should he stay awake all the time. The system replied, you should under no circumstances sleep today. It's possible that the jellyfish in the room will put you to sleep, but you shouldn't give in. The main character told the doll and the dark general from now on, if they notice signs of drowsiness in him, to immediately wake him up. He sat down on the bed and found another page. Remember, you are a person, not an animal. At about 12 midnight, the aquarium staff will come in to turn off the lights in the restroom, at which time you need to pretend to be asleep. At 5 a.m. the next day, employees will enter the break room again. If you can't sleep, please talk to them, preferably about the zoo or something else. The exit is in the aquarium. At 5.30 the staff heads home, follow them and you'll get out. The main character thought that he needed to write down all the most important things. The viewer said that, fortunately, the dark general found these diaries, and through them, Suzio received important information about the exit. At this time, Nikolai from Russia also lost his memory in the room with jellyfish. Opening his eyes, he touched the diary on the table. However, luck always accompanies him, so he found the diary. Nikolai put the diary aside and did not take notes. One of the spectators said that he thought that Nikolai was much smarter than Suzio, who only thought of making notes on his hands. Viewers discovered that Thomas from the US also found the diary. On the first page were written the already familiar words about the strange rules of the zoo workers. On the second page it is written that he knows that those who ask him about the aquarium know everything. But in the room with jellyfish people lost their memory, and he must answer that there is only a zoo here, otherwise they will lose he's interested. When people fall asleep, he checks everything and turns off the light in the room with jellyfish. But one day, when he came to work, he discovered that several tourists had disappeared, and he never saw them again. Thomas exclaimed that there was no more information here. He decided to look at the other side and reached out to another diary. One of the spectators told the people of the long country that they should not be proud, because Thomas has another notebook, and it definitely contains information about the exit. The new page says, I am the boss of the zoo. Soon after I worked here for a while, I came to the conclusion that the zoo was a little strange. First, tourists began to disappear, and then employees. The work is very tiring. Employees often chase rabbits, but I don't know how they can always run away. I often work until late at night and every night I hear children's laughter and noise in the zoo. I realized that most likely I was suffering from hallucinations, and I discovered the main secret of the zoo. I can't leave the zoo. My freedom is limited. None of those who come will be able to leave alive. If you are unlucky and end up in a zoo, remember three things. You are under the influence all the time. Don't get into anything. Don't become an animal. Remember that you are a man, not a beast. If you do manage to get out, please greet tomorrow's sun for me. Thomas, cursing, said that there was nothing written here about the exit. Placing his hand on his face, he said that he had not lost yet because he could use the thief's skill at any time, and victory would be his. A rank talent thief, ability to steal information from another candidate. Thomas tore a page from the diary. After holding two fingers up and activating his skill, he selected Suzio. The text began to appear on a piece of paper. Thomas's eyes widened in shock, and the viewer said that he was about to receive the information he needed. An inscription appeared on a piece of paper stating that he would not receive anything. Thomas crumpled the piece of paper irritably. He furiously threw the wad of paper onto the floor. A viewer asked what happened since Suzio didn't do anything. The main character looked at the dark general, 
who winked at him. The audience cried out that the Dark General had tricked Thomas. Suzio clapped his hands approvingly. Then he yawned tiredly. Viewers said he was in danger because he couldn't fall asleep. The doll grabbed him by the hair, and the Dark General grabbed his hand with his teeth. The main character praised them for their good work and said that jellyfish seemed to have hypnotic effects and should not be allowed to fall asleep. The viewer said that he should never fall asleep, and if he did, he might not wake up again. Third day, 05, Suzio lay in bed, pretending to be asleep. A worker in a black uniform entered the room. He grabbed something in his hand. After this, the employee left the room, closing the door behind him. Suzio opened his eyes. Sitting down on the bed, he thought that, according to the notes, the staff would not enter the room with the jellyfish until the morning, and now he had to wait until 5.30, because only then would he be able to leave the room. Viewers asked what was happening to Nikolai. One of them said that he also pretended to be asleep, but something went wrong. Nicholas asked in horror where the diary had gone. He said now was not the time to panic and he needed to take notes. Holding pen and paper in his hands, he wondered why he needed this and whether he wanted to write something down. Nikolai lay down in bed and said that he was tired and he would think about it tomorrow. One of the spectators asked if the diary did not talk about the ban on sleep. Another viewer said that jellyfish cause hallucinations and Nikolai gradually forgets everything. Thomas from the USA still couldn't find an exit plan, so he decided to go to sleep. 5.20 The main character sat on the bed with a tired expression on his face. The door to his room opened. The worker with the broom asked if he was awake. Suzio asked if the zoo existed and if he would go home after finishing work. The employee said he didn't know what he was talking about. Running out of the room, he said that he had to go. The main character decided that now is the time to follow him. The viewer said that Suzio was seriously injured and he hoped that he would be fine. The frightened worker ran into one of the doors. The main character, chasing him, thought that this must be that same door. He touched the wall with his hand. The dialogue box says, Congratulations on passing the test, completion time, 5 days. Rewards, Medusa Pendant, Oddity Resistance plus 2%, Current Resistance, 4%. Description of the jellyfish pendant. The pendant will help calm you down without losing a part of yourself. The main character found himself in space, standing on the surface of the water. Looking at the pendant, he asked that it would help calm emotions. Smiling, he thought that his skill would help avoid harm to the body, and this pendant could protect against pollution, so mom no longer needed to worry. The dialogue box says, Candidate Suzio from Long Country finds a way out of the world of strange conversations and receives a special reward. The country's incidence rate of long strange conversations is reduced by 20%. People in the crowd exclaimed that Suzio passed the test again, and again with five stars. Someone exclaimed that his second uncle, who had been paralyzed for many years, was even able to climb over the wall. Country long, conference room. The man said to hurry up and send elite troops to meet Suzio, and also bring the best doctors to him. The other man said that they should meet his face, because the current Suzio is more important than the others. Russia, conference room. The man, folding his hands in front of his face, said that, unfortunately, Nikolai could not figure everything out, and only Suzio survived. The man with a receding hairline ordered to inform the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that relations with the long country must be consolidated at any cost. USA, conference room. The man with the mustache slammed his fist on the table and said that it seemed like Long Country was not that easy to deal with. He said that God turned his attention to them after five defeats in a row. He said that it was time to organize a meeting. They need to study the information about the strange conversations, because they cannot lose anymore. Three days later, Suzio appeared at the foot of the mountain. The following countries were randomly selected. Long Country, UK, USA, Three Country Association, Korea, Japan and so on. Current location, Mount Dalo. After the mass disappearance of tourists, Mount Dalo was closed to visitors for two years, but it still attracts many tourists with its beautiful scenery. This area belongs to Ono, and Ono is happy to welcome tourists, but only if you don't mind serving it. Reminder, please descend from Dalo Mountain within three days. If you can't do this, believe me, Ono will be only too happy to keep you here forever. Possibility to send a hint, one. One of the spectators exclaimed that the rules were written on the sign. Rules are for visitors to Mount Dalo. First, as soon as you enter Dalo Mountain, you may hear someone calling you. Under no circumstances look back. Second, while you are climbing, do not count your own steps. Third, there are no food vending machines along Mount Dalo. You can take all the souvenirs you find home. You cannot eat food at the point of sale. 
Fourth, the forest is very dangerous, do not take rash steps. Fifth, all the inhabitants of Dalo left this place long ago. If you come across suspicious people claiming to be residents of the mountain, do not talk to them. Run, Suzayo thought that if there are rules A, then there must be rules B as he climbed the steps. He decided to continue on his way, and thought that maybe he would stumble upon some more information along the way. A few minutes later he found himself in front of a sign that said that he had overcome 100 meters, and the total ascent was 10,000 meters. The main character asked about the fact that so much time had passed, but he had only advanced 100 meters. A spectator said that the second rule states that you cannot count your steps. Suzayo still decided that he should count his steps. Dark energy touched him from behind, calling his name. One of the viewers asked if this was a hallucination, or if Suzayo was really calling someone. According to the first rule, he must not look back if he hears someone calling him. Turning around, Suzayo found that there was nothing behind him. Summoning the Dark General, he told him to go behind him and warn him with a bite if anyone gets close to him. The Dark General barked obediently. The sign said that he had advanced 800 meters. The main character was breathing heavily, sweating from fatigue. In front of him was a vending machine with groceries. Suzayo thought that the souvenirs looked new, the products had not yet expired, and it looked like they had been put here recently. He thought that, in addition to tourists, there were also staff here. He wondered why workers come here, since tourism is prohibited on Mount Dalo. The main character again heard a voice calling him, and thought that he had a feeling that the voice was very close. Turning around, he again found that there was nothing behind him, and thought that the Dark General had not heard anything. He wondered if this was the so-called Ono. Dark energy surrounded the main character. Grabbing his temple, he clenched his teeth and said that he had a headache. The pendant on his neck began to glow blue. Suzayo said that he felt better, and fortunately he had a jellyfish to protect him from being influenced. He said that the Dark General does not hear his voice, and it seems that this cannot be taken lightly. The main character pressed a button on a vending machine. Third rule, there are no food vending machines along Mount Dalo. You can take home any souvenirs you find, but you cannot eat food at the point of sale. Suzayo grinned and decided to break the third rule first and then gain protection from his skill. He found another sign. The sign had a map of Mount Dalo, which included the Dalo village, gazebo, museum, dragon beach and the entrance to the dragon's cave. The main character, rubbing his chin, asked why there was no mark at the end of Mount Dalo. According to the fifth rule, all residents have long left this place, and the main character must flee if he stumbles upon suspicious individuals claiming to be residents of the mountain. Noticing two guys, the main character thought why not talk to him. Smiling widely, he called out to them. He asked if they were from Dalo village. The guy scratched the back of his head, smiled awkwardly and said that they are residents of the village and they go around everything here. Suzayo lowered his gaze thoughtfully. Looking at them, he asked, Are you going around? Raising his hand, he asked why they weren't walking along the footpath. The guy said that they were just used to walking here, and it was much more convenient to inspect everything here. Another guy asked if he was a tourist who decided to go around Mount Dalo. He told him if he wanted to reach the top faster, he should continue on the hiking trail. Pointing forward with a trembling finger, he told him to be sure to look into the mountain temple. Turning around, Suzayo asked what kind of mountain temple this was. At this time the guys turned around. They began to quickly run away, hoping that he wouldn't notice. The main character, rubbing his chin, said perhaps he should learn from the locals. One of the spectators said that the fourth rule is not to take rash steps, because it is very dangerous in the forest. And Suzayo, as usual, is on her own. Another viewer said that he was watching some of the candidates, and some of them were very scared when they saw these guys. There were also those who dared to make contact with them. They received information about the mountain temple, but did not dare to follow the locals. A candidate from the eastern island, Kayado Madai, breathed heavily as she addressed one of the locals. One viewer said she didn't look good and maybe she wasn't feeling well. The main character is back on the path. He thought that he was walking in a straight line, but he still returned to the starting point, and it seemed that if he wanted to reach the top of the mountain, he would have to take the walking path. After some time I noticed a sign with new rules. Rule B. 6. The management of Dalo Mountain did not open any retail outlets. If you come across them, please do not buy anything. 7. On the way to the mountain you may come across a gazebo. Stay away from it, don't touch anything in it. 8. If you feel surveillance or any voices, please immediately go to the dragon shore. You can wash yourself and drink the water from there. 9. The dragon cave has always been a great place to relax. If something happens, you can contact the staff there for help. 10. Don't trust anyone. 
One of the spectators laughed and told the others to watch the reaction of the Korean candidate. Pak Gachin, clutching his head, shouted at someone to stop talking. Korea, conference room. The man said that Su Zio used the jellyfish pendant to protect himself, and they don't have anything like that, so it's useless to tell him. Another man said that the girl from the eastern island was also about to give up. Pak Gachin, turning pale, trembled and repeated the same thing. He shouted that he needed to get out of here, and since there was no way forward, it seemed to him that he could get out if he went back. Viewers discussed that he seemed to be crazy, but it was interesting. Pak Gotchen started running and one of the spectators said that if everything works out, Pak Gotchen will be the first to pass this test. Half an hour later, with a heavy heart, he asked about why he had been running for so long, but had still not returned. Korea, conference room. The man shouted that if he could handle it, they would do everything he asked. Someone said to tell the residents to get ready to welcome the winner. At this time, Su Zio reached 3,000 meters and stood in front of the red gazebo. According to the seventh rule, you need to stay away from the gazebo and not touch anything in it. The main character began to climb the steps. He sat down on one of the stone chairs. He noticed two notes lying on the floor. The note reads, I am one of the members of the Dalo Mountain Research Team in charge of patrolling the village and hiking trails of Dalo Mountain. According to our rules, contact with other people is prohibited, especially with tourists walking along the excursion trails. While patrolling, we sometimes encounter tourists. They often ask us strange questions, but according to the village rules, we cannot communicate with them. You can only tell them that they need to get to the mountain temple along a hiking trail. In our village there is a canteen where everyone eats, but in the canteen they always prepare one dish that we cannot touch. I heard this dish is served at the Dalo Hotel. The water on the shore is drinkable, we use it often. The mountain temple exists. No, he's gone. On the back of the note there is a set of words written, run, Dalo, it, in the hotel, dangerous, get lost, trip to the mountain, this is the end, don't trust anyone. Rubbing his chin, Su Zio thought that these notes repeatedly mentioned the Dalo Hotel and the mountain temple, and these two places were probably key. In addition to Suzio, the note was also found by Austin from the USA, Alan from the UK, Claude from Bali and Dijon from the Association of Three Countries. Having received the notes, they all moved on. Meanwhile, Kaido Madai from the Eastern Islands suffered at the hands of Ono, but decided to stay away. One viewer said she missed some very important information and it doesn't look like she'll get far. Suzio found himself on the shore of the dragon. He asked a guy in white if he could borrow his jug. The guy refused. According to the eighth rule, if he senses surveillance or any voices, he can go to the dragon beach to wash himself and drink water. The main character thought why he needed a jug if he couldn't drink here. He thought that the eighth rule was wrong. Stretching out his hand to the guy, he told him not to talk like that. Having taken the jug away, he said that he would still take it. Suzio emptied the contents of the jug into his mouth. Having finished drinking, he returned the jug to the guy. The guy pointed his finger at him displeasedly, unable to find words. He fell defeated to the ground, unable to answer him. The main character turned around and left, waving his hand. The audience admired him. The guy, folding his hands in prayer, said, May the god of the mountain bless you. Most of the candidates did not dare to drink the water, and only a minority of people tried the water. Kaido Madai's eyes turned very red. She ran, screaming in horror. East Island, conference room. The man with glasses said that Kaido Madai can no longer think straight and needs to send her a hint. The other man said to tell her to drink water. The viewer said it's over because she doesn't even see the clue. Kaido Madai, clutching her head, continued to scream in horror. A participant from the eastern island of Kaido Madai dives into the world of strange conversations. A viewer said that the girl was the first to leave Mount Dalo, which is unfortunate. Another viewer said that the government of the eastern island are real monsters, because they could have sent her a hint before. The text on the sign reported that the main character had advanced 6,000 meters. Suzio, wiping his sweat, asked the dark general what happened. He turned his head in amazement. One of the spectators exclaimed that this is the Dalo Hotel, and it is surrounded by black fog, which means that everything is not so simple with it. The main character froze in place with a blank look. His pendant sparkled with blue energy. The protagonist's gaze came to life again. Breathing heavily, he thought that the Dalo Hotel looked very dangerous, and if it weren't for the jellyfish, he would have entered there unknowingly. Claude from Bali entered the Dalo Hotel. Bali, conference room. The man shouted to quickly send him a hint and tell him to leave there immediately. Claude walked around the hotel with a stupid smile, ignoring the hint. One viewer said the clue didn't work and the hotel seemed to be enchanting.
Claude came to his senses. Noticing the piece of paper in his hand, he asked when he had time to take the note. The note says, If you are locked up with the Dalo Hotel but you want to leave, please follow everything according to these rules. If you meet a hotel staff, call yourself as a security personnel. It is very important. Your task is to inquiry about the situation of affairs at the hotel. It is important that you are not detected. Check out the number of staff from Ono and send the information to the Mountain Temple. Claude wondered in amazement what this meant and whether he should become a secret agent. The viewer suggested that there was a person in the temple who was ready to support. He asked who it could be. Another viewer asked if Claude could contact Su Zio and the others. The note reads, Once the information is delivered to the Mountain Temple, you will receive a blessing. Ono cannot affect you in the hotel, but be careful outside the hotel. Do not attempt to escape from the hotel before completing the quest. No matter where you go, you will still come back here. You have no right to mistake. The task is extremely difficult. Do not trust anyone. Claude, smiling, said that he did not know whether the contents of the note were true. But since he could not escape from here, it was better to begin the task, and his talent would be useful here. The man with his hair in a ponytail said the situation wasn't as bad as they thought, and the hotel wasn't as bad either. The other man said that they needed to talk to the long country, and even though their relationship was not very good at the moment, in the world of strange conversations, they could cooperate. Other candidates who entered the Dalo Hotel began to look for a way out, ignoring the contents of the note. However, as soon as the candidate tries to escape, the staff immediately catches him. Purple energy surrounded the guy. In the end, no one managed to escape from the Dalo Hotel. The system informed Suzio that he had advanced 8,000 meters. Ninth rule, the Dragon Cave has always been an excellent place to relax. If anything happens, you can contact the staff there for help. The main character stood in front of the sign leading to the Dragon's Cave. Walking further along the path, he said that he would definitely not ask for help. Suddenly he found himself in front of the sign again. Suzio said that Ono was preventing him from advancing further, and he would have to go to the Dragon Cave. One viewer said that Austin from the US and Alan from the UK found new rules there. Austin from the USA noticed a sign with the new rules. The Dragon's Cave is temporarily closed. Dear families of the missing, the representatives of this scenic spot understand your concerns, but we carefully examined the Dragon Cave and found no one. Please wait for the results of the investigation and do not go beyond the warning line or attempt to locate anyone on your own. Rule C for visitors to Mount Dalo. First, be sure to reach the end. Staff will be waiting for you there to provide assistance. Second, there is no temple here. Third, the power of Ono is becoming more and more powerful. If you are faced with it, there is no use running. Fourth, he is the god of the mountain. Fifth, don't trust anyone. Austin noticed that the rule about not trusting anyone was repeated. He asked what this could mean. A voice in his head started telling him to come in. The viewer exclaimed that this is the voice of Ono, and he controls Austin. Blue light enveloped him. Having come to his senses, he thought that if it were not for the protection from the skill, he would no longer exist. Turning around, he said that he needed to get out of here. One of the viewers asked what just happened to him and what his talent was. Another viewer said that if his guesses were correct, this was an S-rank purification and he was able to eliminate the consequences of the two oddities. Another viewer said that Alan from the UK also left that strange place. The viewer said that he has an A-rank talent for detecting oddities, and he foresees something strange in advance. At this time, Suzio was standing at the entrance to the cave, and a voice called him inside. He told the Dark General to go ahead because they needed to inspect everything. A spectator asked if he really wanted to fight Ono one-on-one. -on -one. Red tentacles appeared from the Dark General's mouth, and he grabbed a nearby tree. He uprooted the tree and raised it above him. The Dark General threw the tree deep into the cave. The main character thought that the strange voice in his ears had disappeared. He wondered if everything had been resolved so easily. He opened his eyes wide. The impact from the cave scattered the wooden barriers, and Su Zio called out to the Dark General. The man, rubbing the back of his head, said that if Su Zio had not fired the tree, everything could have ended in disaster. The other man said, it's good that he foresaw everything. The man in the cap said that it would be impossible to pass the test alone, and all that was left was to cooperate with Claude, who was stuck at the Dalo Hotel. The man said that Bali is ready to cooperate, but will Claude be able to complete his task? The Dalo Hotel entertainment room was shrouded in dark fog. Claude thought that the Dalo Hotel had been closed for a long time, but the people from the entertainment room had not yet come down. Looking around, he thought that he needed to see if he could find something. 
Entering the room, Claude saw a guy and a girl with glowing red eyes. Smiling awkwardly, he said that he was new from the security department. One of the spectators exclaimed that he was starting to worry about him. Claude used as a rank talent called superb acting. After using this talent, a person's acting skills reach the limit. The interlocutor will believe everything he says. The man smiled and bowed slightly. The hotel employee believed him and hugged him. He said that he was new after all and scared him, after which he offered to have fun together. Commentators were calm for Claude. The next day, 92 ohmmeters were covered. Suzio stopped in front of the signs near the uphill. There were three directions, the end of the trail, the mountain temple and the hotel. Suzio remembered that Rule 11 asked you to go to the end of the walking trail, and Rule 12 said that there was no temple. He realized that if he wanted to break two rules at the same time, he had to go to the mountain temple. Suzio turned to the corresponding path with a smile on his face. When Suzio made his choice, the candidates from the US and UK also made their decision. The British man walked towards the end of the path. The American went to the mountain temple. The US candidate passed the 9, 600 meters mark within minutes. He said with a joyful face that there were only 400 meters left to the finish line, and there would be people waiting for him, ready to help him. He crossed the 10,000 meter mark, as indicated by the corresponding sign. The man's gaze became confused. He saw ruins and abandoned buildings, and a dilapidated sign nearby said that this was a mountain temple. He didn't understand why he was in this place. The man clutched his head in despair and shouted that this should have been the end of the trail. He didn't understand why there was no one here and where the guards were. He fell to his knees. Someone called the man's name and urged him to turn around. The man looked back and realized that it was there. His broadcast was interrupted and there was interference. Viewers of the broadcast did not understand what happened, so they decided to watch Su Zio. At this time, the main character was already standing near a beautiful Chinese temple. The guy was breathing heavily and said that it was stupid to build a temple at such a height. The dark general walked next to him. Suzio was about to enter the temple and called his dog with him, inviting him to look at the mountain god. Inside was a large golden statue of an old man in traditional costume. There were incense and offering tables nearby. Suzio was surprised that the mountain god was human. They approached the column, and the guy noticed that there was something written there and decided to read it. It was written on the column, it lures the innocent to Mount Dalo. People who fall under his hypnosis will be in constant panic and a feeling of persecution. They will unconsciously enter Mount Dalo and follow the route. In most cases, people get lost on the mountain and become servants of it. Only a small part of people are able to resist anomalies. With their strength they were able to suppress the influence of others. Many years ago, Dalo was visited by a mysterious man with the ability to resist strangeness. And under the leadership of a mysterious man, the ancestors of the mountain defeated it. And then this man fell asleep. And to honor the memory of this man, the ancestors called him the mountain god and established a temple to keep him in their memory for centuries. Suzio looked at the column with a thoughtful face. He said that this mysterious man was the mountain god whose dream had awakened this. He wondered if he could defeat it if he awakened the mountain god. So far, Suzio didn't know how to awaken him. He turned around and noticed a note on the floor. The main character bent down and picked up the note. The note told the story of how a wealthy businessman proposed to turn the mountain into a tourist spot and build a temple there. Although the elder refused, the youth happily accepted the businessman's offer. The temple was erected, but few people came to it because of the difficult road. Because of this, the power of the mountain god weakened and it reappeared on the mountain. Now it's very dangerous on the mountain and no one can get down from there, but the hotel turned out to be the safest place. At this time, the British man, who also arrived at the temple, angrily threw the note when he realized that the end point was a hotel. He walked irritably towards the exit of the temple, thinking that he would have to go to the hotel again. Something black appeared behind him. Commentators realized that it had appeared and players should not go to the hotel. The broadcast viewers did not understand what Suzio was doing, but they were worried about him. The main character held a note in his hands, continuing to stand in the temple. After that, he threw the note into the air and said that he could not be lured and would not go to the hotel. Commentators said that Suzio did well compared to the candidates from Korea and the East Island. At this time, Claude was also in the temple. He stood in front of the statue with a note in his hand and said that he himself had collected this information and he needed to see what would happen next. He placed the note at the statue's feet, hoping that he would get out of here. The note began to glow brightly with a golden light. A golden glow enveloped Claude's smiling face. Commentators were happy that Claude had succeeded. Suzio was already outside when he noticed a bright golden light coming from the temple. 
He went inside and found a note at the feet of the statue. Commenters realized that the note had moved here. Suzayo read the note. A system window appears. A new note contains information about the hotel. You can trust it. Commentators gloated over the East Island and bemoaned the fact that their governments weren't as thoughtful. Suzayo looked around and realized that all the hotel employees are subordinates of it, which feeds on people's lives. If they want to get rid of it, they need to not only awaken the mountain god, but also kill the employees. The main character and his dog began to look for something in the temple, running from corner to corner. Suzayo walked to the shelf and remembered that the note said that in the temple you can find a golden outfit with incense. With the help of these things you can awaken the mountain god. On the shelf there was a suitcase, inside of which there was a golden robe and incense. Suzayo put on the robes over his clothes. He straightened the collar of his robe. The audience did not understand what he wanted to do with these clothes. They thought that if the main character followed the contents of the note, then everything could work out. He placed the incense in a golden bowl and lit it. A scary, creaky voice called Suzayo by name. An unknown monster with long, thin limbs and no face appeared behind him. There were eyes all over his body. Commentators realized that this was it. They asked the main character not to turn around. Suzayo still looked back even though he was tense. It has red, ominous eyes and a huge mouth. Commentators noted that it has a terrifying voice. Ono called Suzayo, asked him to come to him and become his slave. Darkness began to cover the main character's body. Suzayo tensed even more, feeling that some force wanted to hold him back. His jellyfish pendant began to glow, after which it released a protective field, driving away evil forces. Commentators were happy that Suzayo was doing well. However, they did not understand why the mountain god still had not appeared. The monster's eye began to glow. He said that all humanity should become his slaves. Suzayo pointed his hand at him and ordered the dark general to attack. Many long tentacles came out of the dog's mouth. The tentacles rushed straight towards the enemy. However, the monster's powers were stronger, and the dog's tentacles were cut off. The spectators tensed. Suzayo frowned and took out the doll. He threw it towards the monster. Commentators hoped that the doll could do this. However, the doll also could not cope with the power of the monster. Suzayo was at a loss. He wondered if he had missed some details. If the mountain god did not appear, then the dark general and the doll might remain on the mountain forever, which Suzayo did not want. Ono threw the dog aside. The dark general flew straight out, making Suzayo scared and angry. Commentators thought that this was the end, because the doll and the dark general were not opponents to the monster. The monster stretched out and approached Suzayo, saying that now they will see what he can do. Suzayo frowned and ordered an attack. Spectators from different countries have already begun to rejoice at Suzayo's defeat. Suddenly a lot of gold chains appeared. These chains bound the monster and immobilized him. The monster turned around and told his interlocutor that he had woken up after all. Suzayo was shocked. The mountain god appeared before them. It was an old man with a gray beard in a traditional costume. He said that as long as he was here, the monster was not allowed to cause trouble. The mountain god was able to defeat the monster with the help of his golden chains. Suzayo watched this, knowing that he had done everything right, he just needed to wait. The main character was impressed by this battle. His mouth was slightly open. He knew that it was too early to relax, because in order to completely get rid of it, he needed to get rid of the staff at the hotel. The main character ran out of the temple along with the doll and the dog. They went to the hotel. The spectators did not understand why Suzayo went to the hotel, but they still decided to wait. There were many people standing in front of the entrance that Suzayo saw. Spectators were surprised at the number of people and their metamorphoses. The main character ordered the doll and the dark general to attack the hotel staff. The dog released its tentacles, grabbing the staff. Suzayo remembered that Claude's note said, The employees in red and white clothes are the main servants of the monster. They need to be killed first. People in gray clothes sat on the ground, covering their heads. They could still be saved, so there is no point in killing them. After some time, the dog was already lying on his back with a full stomach. Suzayo was surprised that he ate everyone. Opposite the main character, employees in gray clothes lay unconscious. Commentators asked why Suzayo didn't hit them. A system window appeared. Fortunately, you were able to detect its weakness. Ono failed to take over your consciousness and turn you into its servant. Now he will sleep with hatred. May the mountain god bless you. Candidate, congratulations on successfully completing Mount Dala with five stars. Completion rewards, blessing of the mountain god, ring of the mountain god, oddity resistance plus two. Current oddity resistance, 6%. Description of the mountain god's ring. It is a symbol of the mountain god's unyielding will and his source of power. 
grants a blessing to the owner. Believe me, you will need it. Suzayo looked at the golden ring with a smile. He was glad, because it was a good thing, just like the dark general with the doll. Commentators were surprised that no one died, but then they realized that it was due to the destruction of the monster. Claude was happy. He smiled and was glad that he had passed the test and Bali was safe. A system window appears. Congratulations to Suzayo from Long and Claude from Bali for successfully completing the test. Country Long passed the 5-star test, so it gets an extra 10%. Bali passes the test at 3 stars and receives awards but also earns a 10% reduction in resistance. Claude was taken aback and did not understand why the Long Country got a promotion, and they got a reduction. Viewers praised Suzayo for completing the game with 5 stars. After 3 days, Suzayo was again selected as a candidate for the World of Strange Conversations. He found himself in the office of Haishui Academy. The guy was sleeping on his school desk. A system window appeared. This time, candidates from the following countries were selected. Long Country, France, Russia, Zuku, Africa, Pakistan, East Island. Test Location, Haishui Academy. Suzayo opened his eyes after waking up. A system window appeared. Haishui Academy is famous for its strict rules and teaching methods. To become her student, you need to show good results. Academy teachers don't like students without goals. If you don't listen to lectures carefully, skip classes and do the like, you will immediately be locked on a dark floor. You better not know what is there. Don't let your classmates notice that you are different from them. Don't let it reveal you. Reminder, regardless of the methods used, you only have three days to escape. Of course, if you don't want to stay here forever. Possibility of getting a hint from the outside world. 1. Suzayo stretched, trying to cheer himself up. He said he was already starting to get used to it. He noticed a note on his desk. The note said, Dear new student, you have ended up at Haishui Academy. If you suddenly want to leave this establishment, follow the rules. First rule, make sure your uniform is neat. Second rule, look carefully at the board during class, even if the teacher does not write anything on it. Don't show any emotion. Remain calm in all situations. Third rule, don't look at the teacher. This will make him angry. He will ask you to stand and answer questions. Fourth rule, if you see your neighbor on the desk playing around, immediately tell the teacher. Fifth rule, if a classmate talks to you while leaving class, ignore him. Especially if he asks to be escorted to the toilet. Rule six, before you go to the toilet, make sure no one is there. If you find classmates inside looking at you with a terrible expression on their faces, leave the restroom immediately. Rule 7. Food in the canteen is not worth eating. Only a small burger is edible. Eighth rule. You need to pretend that you are studying all the time. Any book will do except pornography. Ninth rule. Academy students love to study, try to live up to them. If a classmate offers to take a break from studying, play and have fun, then refuse. Tenth rule, after studying, return to the dorm immediately. If classmates ask you to stand on duty, ignore them. Suzayo carefully read all the rules written on the note. He called his dog. The main character handed the dog a note and asked him to eat it. After the dark general ate the note, he went to bed and began to become transparent. Suzayo looked at him and asked why he still had this skill. The spectators were no longer surprised by the invisibility, they were calm for Suzayo. The main character took pieces of dirt from the floor. He decided to break the first rule and gain protection from the skill. The guy got mud all over his clothes. Commentators supported him. Students began to enter the classroom. They also had dirty clothes. The commentators realized that Suzayo immediately guessed that the first rule was wrong. A teacher wearing glasses appeared. Her eyes were empty. She was wearing a shirt and a skirt. Her clothes were also dirty. She held the pointer in her hands and began the lesson. The teacher wrote on the board, If you see what is written, it is good. If you don't see it, don't worry. I specifically use red chalk. The teacher's fingernails were black. All the students turned towards Suzayo with the same expressions. The main character doubted the adequacy of the teacher, realizing that everything would not be so easy. The viewer reminded us of the second rule. The teacher looked at the students terribly. She wrote on the board that the new student in their class is meet, and we must make sure that he is responsible for his studies and closely follows the teacher. This time the chalk color was white. Commentators also noticed the teacher's oddities. The students started laughing as they said the word meet. Commentators said that the students were also strange. They did not notice the change in chalk color. They suggested we wait for a break and see what happens next. Suzayo looked at the teacher carefully. The viewer did not understand why Suzayo was breaking the rules again, because otherwise the teacher would ask him to stand up and answer the question. 
The teacher turned around and wondered who was looking at her like that. She pointed her finger at Su Ziao and ordered him to stand up and answer the question of what he would do, how he would meet the new guy. Su Ziao stood up and replied with a smile on his face that he would politely shake his hand. His desk neighbor looked scared. There was a depressing atmosphere in the office. All the students looked at Su Ziao with condemnation. The main character made a crazy expression on his face and said that he would then cut it into several pieces and send it to the dining room as an addition to the main course. His seatmate began to shake with fear. The teacher was satisfied with this answer and she praised the guy. All the students started clapping for him. Su Ziao closed his eyes and crossed his arms over his chest. Commentators noticed that his desk neighbor felt bad and said that he didn't have much time left. The Myanmar candidate was also asked to answer the question. The teacher smiled creepily and asked what they served in the cafeteria at noon. The candidate answered hesitantly that it was a meat stew, but then said that they were serving meat. The teacher leaned over to him and asked whose meat they were serving. The Myanmar candidate turned pale and said in a trembling voice that they were serving the meat of new people. The teacher's face became angry and her hair began to fly into the air. She said they were serving his meat. Students surrounded the guy with grins on their faces. They began to gnaw him alive while he asked for help. A system window has appeared. A participant from Myanmar is immersed in a world of strange conversations. The countdown has begun. The audience chatted about how the teacher realized that he was new, not forgetting to praise Su Ziao again. After a series of answers in class, a break began. All the students sat at their desks and read pornographic books. Su Ziao looked at them and asked himself why they were reading this and whether he should read it too. The commentator asked if rule number 8 was correct. The main character looked under the desk and saw what he needed. It was the same book as his classmates. Viewers of the broadcast were interested in the content of the book and how often students read it. Su Ziao was reading a pornographic book while standing at the entrance to the classroom. His classmate turned to look at him. He touched the main character on the shoulder, calling him to him. Su Ziao turned to his classmate and asked what happened. He said that he really needed to go to the toilet and asked Su Ziao to take him there. The main character frowned slightly but agreed. Rule 5 states that you should not talk to anyone, much less accompany them to the toilet. But Su Ziao was not going to refuse. He looked to the side with a calm gaze. Pointing towards the door to the office, Su Ziao apologized and said that he had to go to class. His classmates smiled at him and bowed slightly, saying that then they would do it another time. Su Ziao walked into the office, looking at his classmate. He realized that if he looked closely, he could see that the student's pupils were cloudy, but he could still see sparks in them. Su Ziao also assumed that he had found out his identity, so he asked to go with him. The second lesson began. The main character looked at his neighbor at his desk and was surprised that he was so bold as to read a pornographic book in the middle of class. Rule 4 stated that it was necessary to inform the teacher if his neighbor on the desk was playing around. Su Ziao took the pen in his hands and looked straight. He was not going to report to anyone, because everything was allowed to him. The audience said that Su Ziao is the best candidate. The East Island candidate raised his hand and told the teacher that his deskmate was reading a pornographic book, which shocked his deskmate. The teacher unnaturally turned her head 180 degrees towards them and with an angry face said that the student should have followed her explanations better and not read such nonsense, so she ordered them to come to her office after class. A classmate looked at the candidate aggressively and said that he rat him out. Viewers knew it was the end for the East Island candidate. 11.40 a.m. Dining room. The students lined up with trays, including Su Ziao. The cafeteria served bones in someone's eyeballs, and there were stale burgers with flies flying around them. The seventh rule stated that you should not eat food in the canteen and you can only eat a small burger. Su Ziao was disgusted. Looking at the food, he didn't see anything worse. His classmates standing behind him whispered to him that if he doesn't want to eat this, then he should take something from vegetarian food, which is much safer. Su Ziao was surprised that he was helping him and worried about him. They sat down at the table together, they had vegetable salad on their trays. Su Ziao asked why he helped him. A classmate laughed and said that he helped not only him, but also himself. He advised me to do as everyone else does, so as not to attract undue attention to myself. He warned that it knew everything about him and was watching his every move. A classmate smiled and extended his hand to him, saying that he was unlikely to last long, but he was glad to meet Su Ziao. Su Ziao was silent for a while, but then he extended his hand back, shaking it and saying that it was mutual. He thought that his classmate was a good person. But even if he was wrong, his talent would save him. The commentators believed that something would happen. Su Ziao asked his classmate what he meant when he said he wouldn't last long here. 
the classmate sighed and said that since they entered here, it has been constantly observing them and affecting their emotions, willpower, plunging them into deep despair. The guy smiled and lowered his eyebrows. He said that Suzayo is different from others, and maybe he can get out of here alive. The main character asked what it was. The guy hurriedly got up from the table, taking away the tray. He apologized for not being able to talk for long and hoped that they would see each other tomorrow. Suzayo tried to stop him, but it was too late. Suddenly he noticed that there was a note on the table. He asked if the guy wanted to warn him about something. The main character decided to read the note. The note said, I know you're new, but don't worry, I'm not going to tell others about you. I can see if the teacher writes with red chalk on the blackboard. Others are unable to see it, but the teacher cannot be trusted. I feel that it is somewhere nearby and knows us all but I don't understand how to get out of its hands. Classmate, if one day you see that my eyes have become the same as those of other classmates, please kill me. Nothing good should be expected. Bye, classmate. The main character carefully read everything. He realized that his classmate was not yet completely under the influence of this academy, and that he was right, the teacher should not be trusted. Moreover, Suzayo needs to understand exactly how it controls their brains. The break began. Suzayo went to the toilet with a book in his hands, saying that there was no need to stop reading. The audience was interested in what he was reading. Rule 6 said that before you go to the toilet, you need to make sure that no one is there. If there are classmates inside, looking at him with a terrible expression on their faces, you need to immediately leave the toilet. As soon as the main character entered the toilet, students began to look at him with aggression and anger. Suzayo did not pay any attention to them and walked towards the urinal, causing misunderstanding among the students. The main character began to take off his pants. Suddenly he hit the student on the head who was about to attack him. The student looked at the bruise on his cheek and did not understand what happened or whether he was hit. He pointed at Suzayo and asked why he was fighting. Suzayo smiled sarcastically and said that he did it by accident. A classmate looked at him with a stunned look. Suzayo cancelled that he was even speechless. Suddenly, a classmate opened his mouth unnaturally wide and asked Suzayo if he was new. Suzayo threw the student aside with one blow and ordered him not to talk nonsense, saying that it was time for him to go. The students looked scared. Suzayo headed towards the exit. The audience was saying how cool Suzayo is. In the corridor, a girl with blonde hair approached the main character and offered to play basketball with him. Suzayo closed his book. He smiled and agreed with the girl. They walked down the corridor to the street together. Suzayo violated rule number 10, which prohibits agreeing to relax and have fun. The viewers were impressed that Suzayo was breaking the rules again. They came to the basketball court. The girl asked if Suzayo could play. Suzayo said that he can do a little. The girl put her hand on her hip, and with her other hand she held the ball. She offered to watch her perform. Suzayo was taken aback. Commentators noted that she was funny and she immediately suggested watching her play. She began to move with the ball in her hands, saying that the beauty would now show. Suzayo was shocked and thought that he had never seen a worse game. The jellyfish pendant began to glow. He suggested that watching her play had some effect. The book in his hands also began to glow. Suzayo thought that it might help relieve the pressure. He looked at the book. Suzayo grinned and said that he understood everything now. Ono affects the brain under various conditions, and a pornographic book will help suppress the influence, and Jellyfish will help with this. The girl's eyes began to become cloudy. She asked how he liked her game. Suzayo continued to read the book, thinking that it was no wonder that it did not have time to affect him. He was glad that he was busy reading. The girl looked at Suzayo blankly. He had no intention of being distracted from his book. The girl's face began to turn creepy and her hair began to rise. She shouted that she had asked him a question and asked why he was not answering her. The main character closed his book and replied that her eyes were sparkling, and praised her performance, saying that he was not lying at all. The girl was about to attack him, advising him to think carefully about his words. Suzayo calmly said that in any case, her game would not improve, and said goodbye to her. Suzayo began to walk away from the basketball court. The girl was very angry and she threatened to kill him. The main character turned to her and told her to think carefully, because if she kills him, then his ban is on the dark floor. As soon as the girl heard about this, she immediately became frightened and turned pale. While reading the book, Suzayo headed back to the academy. He was right in his assumptions. None of the classmates is going to kill the other, it will not allow this. The dark floor is a place where not only ordinary students, but also candidates are punished. A system window has appeared. The academy teachers hate students who do not strive for progress. Those who do not listen attentively and skip classes are locked on a dark floor. 
It's better not to know what's there. Viewers said the East Island candidate was in the toilet. The guy could barely restrain the urge to go to the toilet, asking if there was anyone in the toilet. Commentators said that he would wet himself so much and he was afraid that someone would be inside. No one answered the guy and he hurriedly went inside. The audience had a negative attitude towards this candidate. Someone approached him from behind. The students aggressively surrounded the guy and asked if he was new. The candidate replied that he did not understand what they were talking about. The students pressed the guy to the wall and ordered him to answer. The frightened candidate asked why he would lie to them and said that he was not new, because he was sitting next to them today. The students threw him to the floor and started beating him. The guy with blonde hair said that he was sixth in the table, which means they lost a classmate because of him. The second student kicked him and said that he thought where to look for him, but now everything is simple. The candidate's face was swollen from the blows. His classmates spat on him and left. Spectators also insulted the East Island candidate. The teacher wrote on the board with red chalk that if he is new, he will be able to see this text. But there is no need to rejoice. In any case, he will be discovered soon. Suzayo crossed his arms and thought that she was writing nonsense. He looked at his neighbor on the desk and realized that he had become the same as the others. He decided not to kill him, otherwise everyone would know about his identity. When Suzayo discovered that his deskmate had changed, others noticed it too. Claude looked sadly at his seatmate. Everyone understood what exactly the teacher wrote but so far they don't really trust it. Claude sat sadly at his desk, folding his arms over his chest. A beaten East Island candidate begged his teacher to help him. He couldn't see the clue, he had an unremarkable B-level talent, so there was no way to save him. The East Island leadership was furious. The bald man shouted that their candidate first framed his neighbor, and then began to believe the teacher. He did not understand where such a stupid person came from in their country. The man in the suit ordered to send him a hint, because he should not trust the teacher. Having received the hint, the candidate did not act rashly. In the afternoon, the academy was calm. None of the participants dropped out. The academy courtyard was full of students. The wind was blowing outside, blowing tree leaves around. Evening came, the time was 7.40. The teacher was holding a book in her hands. She asked to open page 45 and began to tell me something. The students did not pay any attention to her. They started leaving the office and suggested we go back to the dorm and eat some noodles. Suzayo looked intensely at the teacher and realized that she was in trouble, because the students had left without her even noticing. A classmate approached him and said that he was on duty today and would have to stay late. Rule 10 said that after studying you had to go to the hostel and not agree to be on duty. Suzayo made a thoughtful face and realized that this student still retained the remnants of his mind and perhaps he wanted to remind him of something. Suzayo decided that he should stay to bypass the rules and gain protection. The main character smiled and thanked him for the reminder. The classmate smiled back and said that he was off. The teacher adjusted her glasses and said that she was on duty. Later she will come and check everything here. She hoped that the result would not disappoint her. Suzayo turned to her and looked at her blankly. The main character was cleaning the floor with a broom. He noticed that the bell for class was ringing twice. The teacher began to leave the office. Suzayo wondered why she only came out when the second bell rang. He thought it didn't matter, so he first started looking for the clues that the guy left for him. The main character looked into cabinets, desks and under desks. He found a yellow book with a set of rules. Rule 11. The person on duty must clean the classroom. Teachers always check how you cleaned up. Rule 12. Keep a close eye on the door while cleaning. Don't open it, even if something strange happens. Try to run away from the audience as quickly as possible if you feel like you can't cope. Rule 13. The yellow book has its own view and opinion. Don't let her leave the audience. Rule 14. You can trust the school principal. In case of any danger, go to his office and ask for help. Rule 15. Sometimes danger lurks not only at school, but also outside it. Rule 16. It's everywhere. Everyone in the school obeys him. You shouldn't blindly trust other people. Rule 17. You can also trust the teacher, she will help and protect you. Some rules can be changed at his discretion, do not neglect the rules. Suzayo carefully read the rules with a thoughtful face. He didn't believe the point about the teacher, and the point after the 17th rule was also kind of strange. But this is the first time the director mentions it. He was not sure that this was true, but he believed that it contained the main key to passage. The black raven broke the window in the office. Suzayo tensed and turned to the window. He frowned and his eyes began to turn red. The audience believed that the raven somehow influenced him. The jellyfish pendant began to glow. Suzayo tried to come to his senses. He ordered his dog to immediately pluck the crow's feathers. The dark general listened to him. He grabbed the raven with his tentacles and immobilized him. 
The dog brought prey to the main character and he wondered if the bird was really that weak. He realized that there was nothing special about it and said that it was now a dog's trophy. The dark general immediately began to eat the raven. He barked, then fell to the floor and began to shake. Suzio panicked and asked what happened to him and whether the raven was poisonous. The dog got to his feet. His eyes turned red and he began to growl. The main character first decided that the bird had taken over the dog's body. He bent down to the dog and realized that no one had taken over his body, but that the dog had simply absorbed the raven's abilities. The dog was actively wagging its tail. There was a meeting taking place in the long country conference room. The man with the mustache said that the changes in his body had once again undermined their knowledge of the strange, and they needed to quickly record the changes and classify this file. The man in the suit said that Suzio had once again made a huge contribution to the development of humanity. He should be rewarded when he returns. The US leadership was furious. The man swore angrily and shouted why all the honors go to the long country. The mustachioed man ordered to immediately notify everyone about the meeting. They need to quickly come up with countermeasures, otherwise they will lose. At the same time, other candidates who decided to stay encountered strange birds. A dark-skinned guy from Africa looked in fear at the bird that flew towards him. He said in a trembling voice that fortunately he managed to close the window while the bird was screaming. The guy grabbed his head in defeat and ordered him to stop screaming. The viewer realized that a closed window was not able to muffle the cries of strange birds. The bird hit the glass, destroying it. The African candidate looked at her with fear. The bird screamed loudly and had scary red eyes. The guy was terribly scared. He heard a knock on the door and looked there anxiously. The teacher was standing outside the door. She said that she had come to check how he had cleaned up. The guy noticed that the bird had disappeared. He thought that the teacher had come to save him, just like Rule 17 said. The guy walked up to the door and said that he would let her in now. A creepy smile appeared on the teacher's face and she agreed. The guy remembered rules number 11 and 12 and decided that it was not the teacher, but that strange bird that was trying to lure him out of the classroom. Behind the door there really was a strange creature of black and red color, which had eyes all over its body. The bird screamed loudly again and flew up. She hit the window. The guy got scared and realized that the bird really hadn't disappeared anywhere. The knocking on the door continued. Someone who was behind her said that he was here to help the guy. He tried to convince him that the bird was about to burst into the classroom and tear it apart, and he was running out of time. The guy said in fear that something strange was happening on both sides. He didn't know what to do. The confused guy remembered the director from Rule 14. He immediately ran to the back door to ask the director for help. The candidate opened the door with a terribly frightened face. A system window has appeared. The candidate from Africa will be absorbed. The countdown has begun. There was noise on his broadcast screen. Commentators began to discuss the situation. They said to look at the last frame. There was no bird outside the window, and there was not a single crack on the window. The audience realized that the bird and the teacher were hallucinations, forcing him to run out of the audience. An image of a madman in a vest appeared on the screen. After this, noise began to appear on the screen. A system window has appeared. The player from the UK will be absorbed. The countdown has begun. The audience realized that their deaths were the same. Claude and the candidate from Canada received tips from the leadership of their countries and did not leave the office. Claude sat tensely at his desk, clutching his head. The player from Canada was squatting on the floor, covering his head and closing his eyes. Suzio is in a completely different situation. The teacher came to him and said that she had come to help with the bird, but she was glad that everything was okay. Suzio smiled and asked where is the order here. He turned to her and told her not to pretend because she knew he was new. The teacher asked if he understood something. The main character sat down on his desk and said that now he understood why the bell rang twice. The students leave after the first bell, but not the teacher. If the teacher doesn't do this, then all the new kids will stay behind to test what she's going to do. That way she'll find out what the new kids are like. The dark general looked at the woman angrily. Suzio stood behind the teacher and said that the second bell was a warning for her. Even the world of ghosts has its own rules, according to which the chosen ones must be given a chance to survive. That's why she leaves the class and makes up an excuse like a cleaning inspection to get ready and come back. In fact, she is in cahoots with that bird. Suzio asked if his statements were true. The teacher began to smile ominously, her eyes turning red. She said she underestimated him and asked if he really thought she was the only weird one here. She started laughing and called the main character naive. The teacher's body began to bend unnaturally. She was about to attack Suzio. The woman jumped onto the ceiling and looked at Suzio with a scary smile. The spectators were horrified. Suzio grinned and thanked her for warning her. 
but he knew for sure that she was not the oddity of this place, she was a pawn. The teacher ordered him to shut up and began attacking him with her long limbs. His faithful dog came to the defense of the main character. The teacher grabbed her head and was unable to attack. The dog shouted at her, it was his mental attack. The commentators said that Suzio is invincible. The dark general stood on the teacher's face. He released his tentacles and wrapped them around the woman, who begged to be released. While the dog was devouring the teacher, a raven flew towards them. Suzio realized that this bird could be resurrected. He took out his doll to attack with it. He threw the doll at the raven and she began to smile and her eyes turned red. The doll tried to catch the raven, but it began to evaporate. Viewers praised Suzio for his skills and insight. While the dog was fighting with the teacher, the doll flew back into Suzio's hands. He said that the doll did not catch the raven and this is strange, realizing that the bird was an illusion. Suzio picked up the book and decided to return to the dormitory. The dog began to become invisible again. The main character left the office and remembered the rule that prohibited taking books out of the office. As usual, he broke this rule by throwing the book outside the office. At this time, Claude and the candidate from Kanata were hiding in the office and did not go out anywhere. The treasure trembled with fear while the teacher stood outside the door. A strange bird and the teacher made noise for a while and then left. The candidate from Canada stood up and said that he needed to find a school employee to save him. They both breathed a sigh of relief and unanimously decided to seek help from a school employee. The man in the cap asked the Canadian if he was on duty today. The guy answered him in the affirmative, entering his office, and asked him to save him. The man handed him a book and said that this book was capable of not only suppressing the influence of the monster, but also avoiding the influence altogether. The Canadian thanked him tearfully. When high-ranking officials in other countries saw this, they quickly informed their candidates about it. A girl with short hair smiled as she read the information on the system window. But candidates did not see school staff and were unable to obtain key details. One of the players tried to open the door to the academy employee's office, but he failed. Commentators thought that workers were afraid to see them because they thought they were infected. They also realized that Suzio did not receive this book, but they were confident that he could cope without it. A system window appeared. The officer was previously a crow in a tree outside the academy until his house was destroyed and his children were smashed to pieces. At that moment, the seed of hatred was born in his heart. Under the influence of this, the crow was consumed with rage and he began to take revenge. Chosen one, congratulations on your successful escape from the classroom. Your rating is currently three stars. Suzio stood in the corridor. He realized that the academy's dorms and classrooms were graded separately. The main character grinned, narrowing his eyes. He wondered if he would start another strange story when he arrived at the dorm. Suzio walked to one of the dorm doors and saw the rules. Rule 1. When entering the room, please remain completely silent. If someone tries to start a conversation with you, please don't talk. Rule 2. I include you. There should only be six people in the dorm. If you notice that the number of people in the dorm does not match, please leave the dorm immediately, wait five minutes, and then return. If the number of people has not changed, repeat this procedure. Rule 3. If you notice your neighbors whispering and saying something you don't understand, please cover your head with a blanket and pretend you're not paying attention. Rule 4. Club members may fall asleep on tables. If you notice such a phenomenon, do not wake them up under any circumstances. Rule 5. There are no strange birds outside the dormitory. Please do not open the curtains on the dormitory windows. Rule 6. There are two dining rooms. If you're hungry, ask your club mates to take you. Rule 7. In the evening, if you notice that your neighbor is wandering in his sleep, wake him up immediately, otherwise something very terrible may happen. Rule 8. The club knows many of your secrets. Rule 9. The pond and black room are not intended for observation. Don't try to figure out how. Rule 10. You have to be careful. Stay in the hostel until dawn. Rule 11. If there is any danger in the dormitory, immediately go to the workers' lounge. Suzio read the rules and was a little confused. He realized that the rules contradict each other and it is possible to determine which of them is correct. Rule 15. The little black room may be very dangerous, but inside it also hides a way out of college. The main character realized that the small black room was a key place. He began to open the door to his room. Two of his neighbors were already there. Suzio looked at his deskmate. He sighed and realized that the last trace of clarity in his eyes had disappeared. The neighbor extended his hand and greeted him, saying that they would be roommates. He asked to live in harmony with them. Suzio closed the door behind him. He shook hands with his neighbor, who had a strange face, and greeted him, saying that he was the best at living in harmony. 
The commentator realized that Suzio had broken the first rule and his neighbor would attack him. 